Yo, yo, yo. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, we're doing live. How are we doing? Good. You? Flipping hot. Mate, I'm so hot. I'm about to die in the freezer. I'm going to get some, get some, get some ice on me. Um, so the, so we've sorted the topics out and, um, and the topics that we're going over today is, uh, favorite non-fragrance related smell, um, best comic book movie scene. How much does a fragrance make an impression? Uh, best movie letdown, and we've also got a uh, movie game. Always exciting. Always exciting. Cool. So, should we go over what we've uh, been wearing this week? Yeah, so, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, I got a a new a new one this week, which I've, which I've just kind of been. Um, been exclusively wearing if i'm being honest exclusive um, yeah exclusively Ooh. wearing i'm not i've not been wearing anything else oh. it's um dolce and gabbana's a light blue oh intense oh uh, how very, is it it's very very nice oh very nice. though that being said people might uh slam me for this but that being said yeah doesn't last that long okay Nah. I don't feel like it lasts as long as it um, as people make out. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've but, not um, tried that one. It's it's very nice. It's a very nice summery summery scent. Um, like a very it's a very blue scent. It's very blue. Yeah. It smells like <clears throat> it almost smells like every other blue scent you've ever smelled. All right. Okay. Well, okay. it does it does have something a little bit different that makes it a little bit more appealing. So. So it's uh, <clears throat> so you're not as impressed. Well, it's okay. It's, it's that's it's very wearable. I'll be wearing it again, but it's just it's not it didn't last as long as okay. I expected it to. With mm. um, everyone saying how well it would last. Mm. Cool, Neil. What have you been rocking this week? Well, I've started wearing fragrances again. Now we're allowed out and about again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, fully so yeah i've been on the uh savage this week and last week so i've uh, missed last week's stream so i've just been yeah. sticking to that so i know it and i love it so <laughs> bit of, Dior oh, bit yeah. of, uh, bit of John... for johnny depp as well you know he's had a tough time this week so i thought i'd throw on a savage in his honor yeah he needs, <laughs> he needs, he needs <laughs> looking after um so yeah need to treat him wearing a bit of savage um so one of mine is uh are you getting any comments popping up no nothing yet no one's talking well no i don't think uh i think we've got from what i can see i think we've just got one person or no people in hi hi one person we appreciate you yeah uh, we love you very much. Very much. There's, pro- there's probably another stream going on. Um, so cool, maybe, sure it's, yeah, uh... maybe it's, that's what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Stop, stop. Uh, so mine is one million lucky. Have you tried this one? Mm, lucky. Um, I think I've smelled it on you. Is that the one that's got a bit of plum in it? Yeah. Oh, be plums. Yeah, really I think nice. I've smelled it on you. Really I've not nice. actually, um, I've not actually tried it myself. <clears throat> I, th- I think this one is a big uh, compliment getter as well. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely good for good for summer, and um, yeah, just overall really nice. So, have you got any other ones, Anthony? Have I got any others that I've been wearing? Yes. No, not this week. I've just been trying to give um, the the light blue a good wearing. Yeah, um, but I've still got quite a few that are in my collection that I haven't given a a good seeing to. Oh, as it were. As it were. Um, so yeah, I'll be. Um, 
I think I've been mixing up a little bit this week. So I have got a sample of Ooh, samples. Um, so this one was Armaf's uh, milestone. So this is a clone Ooh. of uh, Millicene. Yeah. Where would you get that is, from? Uh, I just got it off eBay. Oh, check. So it was a dead cheap one. I think it was only like one ninety nine. Yeah, I think the bottle was um, like thirty quid or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, this. It impressed me. It was really nice. Uh, lasts a long time, and it's made me want to uh, potentially get a purchase. Ooh. Um, so yeah, it's really nice. Have you seen? Have you really seen nice. the bottle? F- have you seen the bottle for it as well? Yeah, yeah. Neil, if you haven't seen it, it's bright gold. It's just like it's um, like a, a huge gold bottle. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. It's, nice. it, you won't be able to miss it. <clears throat> yeah, so it's really nice. I think you'd really like this one, and um, if you got your nose on it, it's really. Yeah, I do it's like sim- I, do, I do like a bit of Millicene, Millicene Imperial. Yeah, it's uh, very similar to uh, Sean John, Unforgivable, mm. which obviously they, there's oh, comparisons like for anyway. Um, oh, so yeah, really, really nice. Uh, Neil, have you have you been wearing anything else this week? Hey, Zahar off. Lit- literally, it's just a savage man. Like literally, I, I need to mix it up a little bit. I think. See, uh, did you did you see that? It was like there was no one here, and then all of a sudden everyone was here. Like I, I, yeah. I feel like there was a delay in no uh, delay. I think yeah, there was a delay. Oh, Sam the Sun, how you doing, mate? <coughs> uh, big Bye. shout out to Sam. I got um, his samples from Collage. Uh, Collage. So I'll be uh, re- reviewing them at some point. Uh, George Zaharaf. Oh, Mr. Um, Zahar is in the house. Yes. Quick hello. I hope you have a great weekend, mate. hope you're not too dripping. Baza. Yeah, get them off. Barre, barre, barre. Clean that yes. uh, And we've got Heather. Heather in the house. Uh, so I've also purchased. Oh, yes, I've got a I'm few gonna... purchases. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to uh, name what it is yet, but we're going to have a... Uh, collab coming up with me Ooh. and and the buzzer uh, Ooh, coming yes. up for this it's little nice. nice one uh, love yeah, nice it's really collab. nice yeah really it's nice. really good um, like really good have you got yours and yeah man. yeah yeah it came through when, i never told you that um, no no it no, came, no it came through because i got i got that i got yeah. um and i got here so i got that Ooh. i got <clears> the <throat> Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, oils, and I got this. So, um, I got Wood Miracle eighteen seventy two, which Ooh. you will know is uh, Cidre. Yeah, Mancera Cidre Bois. If you want to, <laughs> what, 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 you... what did you think of it? It's really good. Like really close. Like from what I remember, from what I remember smelling on you, because I've only ever smelt the original on you because i've not known anyone else that's got it yeah. this is really good it's really really good. nice really nice um and then i picked up um some of the oils oh yeah um, and these these aren't for um fragrance use these are for um a diffuser the house. use yes yeah, or more for the house because i picked up a um uh, a diffuser electric diffuser which oh, nice. um, I've just been banging a few of them in there, which is really nice. So I got uh, Card Red, which I think is, off the top of my head, I think that is Baccarat Rouge. All right, okay. Um, I got a Stray Fruit, which is Lost Cherry. Yeah. Which which is in my diffuser at the minute. It's wicked. Like, is it? this, um, yeah, this, um, this room's not very big, and I've got it behind my um, my screen. Yeah, um, I don't have it on now, but like I had it on, not today. It's too hot today, but I had it on yesterday, and my <clears> gosh, <throat> like it just fills it fills the room. Like all I could smell was cherry almond. It was wicked. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then your second intrinsic, which um, is Gautier Two, and that's oh. that's because uh, it's vanilla. I thought with it yeah, being yeah, vanilla, yeah. it would smell quite nice in the air. Um. And then mm. I've got Blue Waters, which is um, Virgin Island water. 
Oh, so nice. all, all very nice, really, um, just really lovely smells that you'd you'd want to smell in the air. I just thought, yeah, yeah, I, I'd get them, see how it works, mm. and um, it's been working really quite well to be fair. So um, I'm looking Ooh, forward nice. to trying out a few of them as well. You do get the uh, the oil when you take when you take the roller out of it. You get the yeah. oil all over your hands though. So yeah, like, yeah, anyone I doing it, just try and use a some tongs or something like that. I don't know. However, you want to do it or uh, some yeah. tweezers or what. But um, if you do it with your hands, your hands are going to stoke. Noise, noise. Uh, we've got John in the house. All right, John. Uh, Mr. Snow. So... Hi, right, John Snow. John Barry's, Snow. Saying, Barry's saying he's got a few of these. So he's got the BR540. We've got... Uh... Yeah, I actually got the BR540 because of Barry. Buzzer! Uh, we've got Tony. Yo, yo, Tony. yo. Tony, did you have that white shirt on today? And I, what watched you a, um, I watched a review of yours earlier on, Tony. Yeah, quite, he's, he's quite uh, funny. Your um, your office for men was uh, was really quite funny, actually. The um, the thing that made me laugh at was was the uh, one the spin where you you kind of pretty much like went arse over tit, um, but then the it was at the end where he was like, "Have you subscribed?" Have, are, have you subscribed? Go and click it. Click it. Have you, have you subscribed yet? It just really made me laugh. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I was, I was watching it on the, uh, I was watching it on the bus. Um, the so yeah, like, was, bus. Yeah. Oh god, mate. The the bus was horrible. And as <laughs> I as I was going through town, town was absolutely rammed. Um, was it? People out drinking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I um, suppose yeah, because of drinking. It was Friday night. Yeah, it was. It was really uh, yeah. even in town. Uh, so Tony said, first payday uh, weekend after lockdown, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Blue Waters is lovely, and yeah, it's really nice. It smells lovely. So, we've got uh, Jackie in. Hi, Jackie. We've got Scott. How are we doing, mate? Word. Uh, so the last one that I've been wearing this week is this one's a big favorite of mine from uh, Perfume Parlor, and this I know it's gonna be. I know it's going to be scent oh, of peace we have a special guest. for him. We have a special guest, people. We have a special guest, Heather. And he's in. He- he's in the lounge. Heather. He- Heather, you- you're going. You're going to scream. Oh. You're going to squeal like a fangirl now. Are you ready? Yeah, hold, hold your horses. He's can coming. anyone guess? Can anyone guess who it is? Any guesses? Let me see if we get any guesses in the comments. Oh my god. Oh my oh, god. Oh my god. Let's get him in. Let's get him let's, in. Let's get him in. Here he oh, is. Who is this sexy Yay. man? Who are I done? Yeah, I feel, I feel like you built me up a little bit there. I was going to stand with my cock out or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what happened? would have been nice. Is that Neil with a computer set up? <laughs> it is. Hey. He's had aircut as well. Yeah, he went and he went and robbed yeah, look, one. Um, nearly all gone now. Yeah. Look, look, hands over, so the shops are ready for robbing. <laughs> <laughs> Barry man. says, "Turn your phone up." <clears throat> no, he says, "Turn your phone." There you go. There you go. Oh, That's it. I can't, I can't really. Oh man, that really shows off the size of my nose, man. Look at the size of that. <laughs> oh, it's nice. <laughs> So how have we been, Dan? Yeah, I've literally just got back off holiday. So um, oh, nice. everything's crazy busy at the minute. Like Trying to get stuff in order. Second load of washings in. The boys are still awake. So I thought the boys are still awake? Yeah, yeah. I've not been back in the house long. All oh, right, cool. So how was your... Uh... New purchases? Did you try them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I bought um, Hugo Boss Extreme or Extreme, whatever they want to call it. Oh yeah, any um, good? Yeah, it really, really was um, just like the original one, and I really liked that one. Um, but it came with a it came with a free sample of um, Green Wood by D Squared. All right, yeah. I like that. 
do oh. squirt. I feel like my angle's off. <clears throat> it's because your cock's not out. You get it under your chin. <laughs> They're like, no, I've not, not even had time to boot my laptop up, so I couldn't come on that way. I just thought, I'd yeah, that's all right. Before I go and jump in the bath, I don't know if you can see how sweaty I am. We, lo- we like you, sweaty. We're, yeah. we're all sweaty today. Shit. I've got this next. I've got this next to me today, Dan. <laughs> can you just keep touching I'm, my face. <sighs> I'm coming over to yours tomorrow, Nick. Yeah, you are. So we'll um. We we'll love a cuddle. We we'll get some of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably won't. Well, yeah, we will see. Uh, so Heather's having a spaz attack. I think she's vanished. <laughs> I mean, she's just taking five minutes to herself. <laughs> she's she's missed your face. She has, she has been complaining. I every think single week. Sort of, every single yeah. week. It's like where, where's Dan? Where, where's Dan? I, I need Dan now. She messaged me last week to see if I was coming on. <laughs> I yeah, do it. so yeah, busy, busy man, aren't you done? I'll be, we'll be, we'll be all right for next week. I should be good. Good, good, good. Uh, so we're going to look at at some point doing uh, Dan's uh, little series of uh, first impressions. So I think we've got a name for it, which we won't say yet. Uh, it's not very uh, original, but um, I'm sure it'll be uh, very fun and explicit. As for what Don't everyone knows, I like explicit. It'll be honest. Yeah. That, that's all. I'll, I'll just be honest. But if anyone's, um, if anyone out there's got something that they want us to sample, if you've got a little sample pot you want to send over to us, I'll happily give it a try. <laughs> a quick sniff. Um, cool. So the first topic of the day is favorite non fragrance related smell. And it's not a fart, Dan. <laughs> I can see your face. Uh, it's just your own farts, isn't it? Like other farts. Yeah, just... everyone, everyone loves their everyone own, loves their own brand. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll, uh, like I'll start it. us off. Um, so <clears throat> I like a sort of the smell of a cigar this uh cigar or you know them old men pipes yeah yeah like the smell of old men you yeah, like the smell yeah. of old men pipes damn right yeah, i love that smell you know that <laughs> unsmoked though not while it's really being nice. smoked i prefer the smell unsmoked yeah 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 what about mm-hmm. you Ant? So there's a few actually. Um, I think a lot of people will will agree with the first one um, is petrol. Oh, you get to a petrol <laughs> station. You get to a petrol station. You bang the nozzle out. You pop it in. You start pumping away, and then you get the uh, the unleaded. You, you have the a right unleaded. good sniff at the petrol station. Mm, right. Then but, you're like, <laughs> what, what's even what's even weirder? <laughs> What's even weirder is that it smells it smells better from inside the car than it does outside the car. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Like if someone else is putting the petrol in the car, it smells nicer if it's not you doing it. Um, okay. But yeah, there's that. Um, what's the other one? Oh, um, it's similar to the cigar um, topic. Um, a just a just lit cigarette, not the rest of the cigarette. Like the first, the, the moment it's lit, yeah, it's really strange. Like the yeah, moment yeah. it's lit, and that is that whenever someone takes the first drag of it, like not me, but whenever someone takes the first drag of it, it smells a lot <laughs> different than the rest of it. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah I, I quite like that smell. <clears throat> mm. So Tony's put uh, Indian food makes my mouth water. Yeah, I'm not. The I've always said fan. this about you. Someone not quite right. <laughs> don't deny it I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doubting it for a second uh, Jackie puts a cigar wooden box bit of spicy woody mm. uh, John hey, says KFC hey, we've, got Neil, we, we've got Neil, Neil's brother in the comments hey, so, uh, hey, say, Dave. say hello <laughs> to Dave John every uh, time every, John, every time oh. I drive past KFC like the smell is just divine Oh yes, 
Just the uh, top tier smell that is KFC. Jacqueline's yeah. in. Uh, Jacqueline's in with the uh, the gasoline. gasoline absolutely. Burnt rubber. Oh, tire, tire rubber. rubber. Yeah. Ooh, good one. Yeah. Coffee and freshly cooked bread. Yeah, uh, the cooked bread. Definitely agree. You know what I like as well? Porridge. Yeah. I love the smell of porridge for some reason. <clears throat> it's really nice. Uh, so glad you put Ty there, Jackie. Uh, Neil, what about you? What's one of yours? Um, you know, r- when it's rained on a hot day. Mm. You know, that mm-hmm. smell of the rain evaporating. Like that today. Smell. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just pissed well, yeah, down, yeah, 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 that's what reminds me. Rain, rain on a hot floor. Yeah, exactly. Rain yeah. on a hot floor. Uh, yeah, I love rain it. Rain on a hot I floor. Love, yeah. Love, love, love the smell of rain on a hot floor. Mm. You know what I like as well? You know, it's like, like a holiday a, smell as well, isn't it? Yeah. Not a uh, sort of summer morning, but a, you know, when it's like that cold, fresh in the morning mm. where it's like yeah. it's sunny, but nice and fresh. You're like, oh, wakes you up proper nice. So your brother says pizza. Mm. It's always about this first sniff <laughs> when <laughs> you open the pizza me. box. First sniff of a pizza yeah, is banging. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, another um, thing that no one's got, which is quite a, a fan favourite, is um, freshly cut grass. Yeah. Can't, cut can't grass. beat freshly yeah, cut grass. Smell. I mean, yeah. I suffer with hay fever, so I, can, I can't smell it for too long. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm uh, ready to claw my eyes out, um, and my, my nose is a dripping mess. But, um, yeah, freshly cut grass. BC. Yes, comic book movies are coming, mate. They are coming. We've got, we, we got some good ones coming up. Um, what about barbecues? What, what, the smell of a barbecue? Or just yeah, barbecue? yeah. Like, how do I feel about barbecues? <laughs> yeah, just the, the, the smell. Yeah, man. Is something that you like? Mm. Well, of course it is. I've just seen... Um, I've just seen uh, Barry. He's put... Um, this is a banger. Pardon the pun. Party after poppers been smell popped. after they've been popped. Party poppers smell incredible. Yes. Like Fire they works. smell well, so good. It's so like I'm sure that there's it, there's something wrong about that smell. Like it, you yeah. shouldn't be smelling it because it <laughs> smells that bloody good. <laughs> I tell you one, it's a <clears throat> shop, and it does me in when I'm going to work. Subway. Oh, 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 it smells Subway. And the, the even though I probably don't eat from there, it just... The I smell like of smell. Subway is almost... I or I, I do, I agree, like because it's the, the fresh, uncooked meat element yeah, yeah, that I yeah. can smell. And that's... I love walking past the butchers. Like, it's it sounds weird. But, but you know, because butchers have always got open doors. Yeah. Um, the smell that you get when you walk past the butchers is wicked. So we've got uh, hot rain, coffee brewing, <clears throat> Earl Grey, a bit of Earl Grey. I like Earl Grey tea. It's nice. Very nice. Uh, Dave puts, also the smell of turf being in the countryside. Get that in Ireland a lot. Mm. Very nice. Mm. PT Scotch. Very Pete nice. Scotch. I just right, okay. I just lost connection then, so sorry. <laughs> So, uh, what else? oh, donuts, cookie, mm, yes. uh, dinky donuts. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. What's John put? Raw pork flesh and yeah, no, like, like it's weird. Like the smell of of raw meat it, uh, in itself isn't that nice. But when you walk past the butchers, I'm just like, oh my god! I think it's just because they've got like spiced meat there and stuff like that. Yeah. But, like, I love, like, some people are repulsed by the smell of a butcher's. I yeah. love the smell of a butcher's. I just, I just do, right? Sue me. An Italian delicatessen, yeah. That's, Ooh. that's the kind of, that's the kind of subway kind of smell you get because of, like, all the, mm. the cold cuts and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. A room of sweaty men smells off, but I like a tiny bit of musk. Well, that's what, well, we, that's what my house feels like for a minute. Cheeky. <laughs> Every house up and down the UK right now is filled mm-hmm. with the sweaty smell. Tony's got his meats and cheeses out. Meats and cheese. Neil <laughs> should know the smell. Neil yeah, the definitely smell. knows the smell. Yes. Busy. 
Uh, so we've got uh, treacle pudding. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know I'm getting hungry as well, mate. <laughs> Where's that Sadler's pizza? Spiced oh. meat. Spiced meat. I'm telling you, when you walk past the butchers and you can smell spiced meat. Get in my belly. Yeah. It's almost like, like you want to eat it raw. We've got a uh, quick <clears throat> movie game. So Ooh. this movie game is based on the uh, description. So I'm going to tell you a description, and then you've got to guess the movie. Okay, so the first one. Genius swaps vital information for a story about sheep. Got it. You got it? Yeah. All right, let's see if anyone else in the comments gets it. Has Neil moved out of his beehive? I can go back into the beehive if you want. It's still there. <laughs> So the description of the movie, Genius Swaps Vital Information for a Story About Sheep. What movie do we think this is? I have no idea. Got it. I got it. I, I, got, I it. got it. Let, 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 let's see if you anyone know. else gets it. The Bread Ovens. Sean the Sheep? No, definitely not Sean, Sean the Sheep. sheep. Dave's like, say it again. <laughs> say it again one more time for me. I'll say it again for you, baby. Genius swaps vital information for a story about sheep. So think so of a horror like, film. These are like these are like poorly, <coughs> poorly X. Yeah, hey, yeah. There you go. So go. The lamps. Uh, Buzzer got it. Yeah, these are right. poor, so these are poorly explained movies, aren't they? Yeah. So number two. World's best theme park becomes world's worst theme park. <laughs> mm. I, think Dave, I think Dave's got this one. Do you think? I think so. World's best so theme this park becomes world's world best theme worst. park. Yeah, becomes world's worst theme yeah. park. Yes. Oh, so we've got it, winner. Dave got Jurassic it. Jurassic Park. Park. Do you know what? Dave does the best impression of a Veloci Velociraptor. It's amazing. He does. He does. Yeah. <laughs> this with without clothes as well. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, number three. One person is killed with a chainsaw. Hmm. Hmm. I think I know what it might be. Well, it's not okay. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, then, is it? No, because I think there's more than one in that one, isn't there? Oh, no. Yeah, I think yeah, I've, it is. yeah it is. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Yeah, it is Texas Chainsaw. Is it? it yeah, yeah. It, it was that, the Texas uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right, this one is a tricky one. Nick, Nick, can I just yeah. say? Yeah. That was yeah. shit. That was shit. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was an uh, American uh, Psycho. To be you said that I was about no, no. to say American yeah. Psycho. Down right, this one. See if you get this one then. So the face of William Shatner is the Got face it. of it. pure Got it evil. Straight away. Don't straight don't away. say it. Let's see who gets it in the comments. Say it again. So the Sorry, face the face there. the face of William Shatner is the face of pure evil. There you go. Oh, there someone's on fire. Dave is on it. Mr. Mike yeah, Myers. Michael Myers. Michael Myers' mask is just William Shatner uh, painted yeah. white. Mm. Dave is on it. Right, number five. Yeah, Motherfucker going. Oh, God. <laughs> right, okay. So, man shags woman, then ruins her daughter's wedding. Walking <laughs> <Okay>, lad. <laughs> um... <laughs> Man shags woman and ruins his daughter's wedding. Yeah. His own daughter's wedding. Uh, I don't know. It could be any daughter. <clears throat> Man shags woman. Oy, oy, oy. And yo, yo, yo. So we're doing daughter. the movie game. So we're doing uh, poor, poor descriptions for movies. So this one is Man shags woman, then ruins her daughter's wedding. 
Steve Martin one, no. Uh, Parenthood, no. Father of the Bride, no. So I think a uh, bit of a, an older film. Man shags woman and ruins his daughter's wedding. Her daughters yeah. or his daughters? Her daughters. Oh, her daughters. Hmm. Oh. Sounds like a shit film. <laughs> I missed. I missed out on the on the uh, the favourite smells. Yeah, we can. I, come I back heard to that, don't worry. Anthony said petrol because I. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the film. Oh, when was, was it? No, it was the the graduate. I've never seen it. Never seen it. Right. Okay. Let's You're see. Not, how have you not <laughs> seen the graduate? You fucking film buffs. Right. This one is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> naked, naked Austrian pursues mother and child and is a hero. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got it. Naked Austrian pursues mother and child and is a hero. Yes. <laughs> Terminate. Easy. Yes. <laughs> well, no, technically it's Terminate, Terminate. Terminator. So who got that? John. Terminator. John Boy jumped in. <laughs> right, number seven. Terminate. <laughs> This one could be a toughie. I don't know how many people have seen this one, but I, I know the film, and I think uh, I know Neil knows this film. So estate agents are the worst. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know this one. Hmm. 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 So estate agents are the worst. American Psycho, no. So this has got quite a uh, decent cast in this film. Hmm. It's not a current one. It's a bit of a, an oldie. No, you got me on one of the actors got an Oscar. Yeah, he did. Film? One. Uh, no, not for the for that like film we're talking about. So one of the actors in this film is an Oscar winner for best actor. He is, yeah. For this film, uh, no, no, not yeah, for this supporting film. actor. They got nominated. For this, say so. Rent, no. Jackie Brown, Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton in it. Nope. Nope. So I'll give you another clue. Alec Baldwin is in it. Oh, is it? Oh, um, usual suspects. Nope. Is it? Okay. That, uh, is it that um, movie you 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 showed me yeah. where Alec Baldwin yeah. goes in and fucking like just destroys everyone? Um, yes. I can't remember what it's called. Is it? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what is it called? Um, yeah, that's got a bit of a weird name. I yeah, think, uh, but Barry will jump in at some point. No, not a few good men. Yeah, Bolt, basically, Bolt, Baldwin goes in and is just, he goes in there and he literally just like calls everyone, like every name under the sun, just saying everyone's everyone's shit and they're not doing good and, and all that kind of stuff. What the hell is the movie called? Like something Gary. So, yeah. Is it Gary something? Oh my God. No. Uh, no, get shorty. Yeah, oh, it is going to get it. Yeah. It's got Gary in it. It's got Gary it's Glenn, in it. Yeah, it has Glenn, got Gary in it. Glenn Gary in it. Some of that. Glenn Gary Ross. Glenn yeah. Gary Ross. Glenn Gary Ross. It's the one. Right, okay. So what the next was that, one. What was that movie you showed me the clip of Tom Cruise um, doing that like speech? Oh, um, oh was that Magnolia. This, this yeah, is Magnolia. Bit, Magnolia. This is amazing. <laughs> Tom Cruise yeah, yeah. is awesome in Magnolia. Where is it? Yeah, isn't he's, he like a pickle he's... artist or something? Respect yeah, he cop. is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, just I think, I think I get reminded of um, that whenever I hear Glengarry Ross because you showed me the clips like back to back, and I found that clip of of Tom Cruise 
hysterical. We were in hysterics, weren't we? <laughs> um, okay, so this next one, number eight. Man waits for bus and talks a lot. Forrest Gump. Yes. Yeah. Dan. Straight on that bad boy. Right, okay, so we've got two left. Oh, okay, so mentally challenged mentally challenged magician befriends mouse and dies horribly. Oh yeah, I know this one. I know, oh, I've got this one. I know this one already. I watched this tonight. Yeah, don't say it. See if mentally anyone gets it. Mentally challenged magician befriends mouse and dies horribly. Yeah. Rayman, no, not Rayman. <laughs> Where's the point? He dies horribly. But guess. Oh, oh shit. there we go. Green Barry got it first, and then Dave got it after. Mentally Green challenged Mile. magician. Yeah. Yes. Oh, John Coffey. Ooh, I can't nice watch. One. I cannot watch Green Mile and watch Tom Tom Hanks try and take a piss without absolutely feeling every second of it with him. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, he sells it. He sells there, it. He's like, good. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> you, when, when he has, when he finally has that piss, and he's just like, oh, you kind of go, oh yeah. It's just, oh I'm, yeah. Every Go time, on. every time I watch it, and then you know, if you have to go to the toilet during it after you've seen that film, shit myself. What if? What if it happens? To me? <laughs> just, just shit there. I literally, I just be to the doctor, just like fucking cut it off. I've no need for it anymore. Cut it off. Right, next one. This is the last one. So, number 10. Elderly man persuades young boys to go on a foreign journey. This is Neil's life story. (laughs) 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 Neil, the elderly man? I've not sold the script yet, mate. Neil Neil was one of the young boys. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, not up. Read it again, Nick. Yeah. So, elderly man persuades young boys to go on a foreign journey. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Yes, John. <laughs> Jump straight on that bad boy. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Cool. So, <laughs> that's the movie game In done. Fact, I think I've got a few of these. Hang on a second. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, hang on one second. Let me just find it. Um... Why are you finding that? Dan, what was one of your favourite smells? Did anyone mention bread? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fresh yeah, cut bread. Yeah, fresh yeah. Bread, what about yeah. bacon? Oh, yeah, oh, no, oh, yeah. bacon. But no, I suppose one of those that I really, really love, you know, the old matches. Oh, the old yeah, ma- yeah. Not, not the wet start matches, but the old matches. Mm-hmm. Oh, the ether from that. Ooh. Really nice. But I suppose I've, that goes with being a pyromaniac. I've got some. Go on then. Right, so first one. Old guy obsessively stalks teenage girl, a dog interferes. <laughs> hmm. oh, I don't know. And are you wearing any pants? I was just about to ask him that. Yes. I'm just wearing really short shorts because I am hotter than a motherfucker up here. <laughs> I'm wearing speedos today. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Like, my shorts are like short. <laughs> yeah. Look at the package. Sexy <laughs> boy. <laughs> well, I think it was hanging out. <laughs> 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 I had to drop it down one leg and up the other. Um, uh, I'm gonna get old guy, old, uh, I'll give you a, a different, a different. Um, Lizzie, Lizzie literally joined at the worst. Lizzie, Lizzie, Lizzie. Lizzie. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, the the other the other one for this one. Look at the quads. That's right, Graham. You know, um, Zeus is in the, the lo- love triangle <laughs> between an 18 year old girl, a hundred year old guy. What? Sounds like the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> mm-hmm. Say that again. A love triangle. Oh. Can you hear me? I don't know. Yeah. Love triangle between an eighteen-year-old girl, a hundred-year-old guy, and a dog. Labyrinth. 
This one is a little difficult, I won't lie. Is it, is it a popular film? Yeah. <laughs> Did it come out yeah. in the last 10 years? I think John's got it. Don't think of the dog as a dog. Twilight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, John's go on, it. no one else is guessing. Go on, Neil. Twilight, no? Yeah. John? John's got it. Twilight. Not Twilight. Twilight, yeah. Oh, it is yeah. Twilight. John got oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. Twilight. Yeah. Very Twilight. good. Twilight, yeah. Anyone nice. Twilight? Nice. Twilight? Nice. Definitely Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Um, after the death of her parents and the pressures of turning 18, a young royal causes millions in property damage to her hometown. Frozen. Yeah, I thought Frozen. Correct. Correct. Yes. But frozen, just like Anthony's feed at the moment. I think it's a bit of a delay. <laughs> you scared him can now. You, can you see me? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> can you see me? Yeah, yeah, we're going. Yeah, yeah, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, divorced <laughs> man. Divorced man discovers his trans identity and loses custody of his children. Oh. <laughs> yeah, classic. <coughs> see, let's see who gets this one in the comments. This one should be pretty easy to get. Yeah, it's very easy. This one, I love this film as well. Yeah, great film. Hello. <laughs> so, so after this, we're going to go on to best comic book movie scenes. And we've got some good ones lined up. Doubtfire, John is on it. Yes. Scott got it. John is on yes. it. Yes. Okay, then the last the last one. Um go. Ooh. Everyone tried everyone tried the ice bucket challenge. Nobody liked it. Oh, that's easy. Oh. That's easy. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Uh, that stars an Oscar winner, doesn't it? Or two Oscar winners? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it, yeah does, it does. Yeah. yeah. Robin Williams. I love Robin Williams. Everyone Don't like tried. Robbie Williams. Nobody likes Tony, it. Tony, Tony's getting moist. He's just moist. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sat in his chair getting moist. Dave, Dave yeah. Yeah. Neil's brother's got it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Titanic. Titanic. I'm not giving him the answers, I swear. <laughs> Seems to be getting them all right. Boom. Right, okay. So, best comic book movie scene. So, a few of us have uh, already got some uh, some prepared. Oh, um, we're not done. Yeah, he'll come back. He's just gone for uh, a number two or a number three. <laughs> right. <Or> number okay. <laughs> three. <laughs> Right, so my so I've got a few, uh, but I'll go over one at a time. So <clears> one <throat> of my first favourite comic book scenes. So this one's a recent one, and it was from <clears throat> the new Spider-Man. So it was the illusion scene with Mysterio, and when I watched that in the cinema, I was like, "This looks amazing." Um, what did you guys think of this scene? Yeah, it's it, sick, wasn't it? Special effects were good. Yeah, awesome. What yeah. about you, Dan? <clears throat> did you like this one? I struggled with the film, to be honest, mate. Did you? Really? I thought Gyllenhaal's character was a bag of wank. Oh, don't yeah, be talking he, about he Far From great. Home and slagging it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, I love it. Just what a, did you think? What did you think of that one? Aunt? Oh, he, he had to take two minutes away because he knew what was coming up, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I chose the uh, illusion scene in the new Spider-Man. It's one of my fucking uh, banging, yeah, mm. recent films. And I know, um, I know, Dan, you didn't just uh, cuss out Gyllenhaal like live on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> didn't like didn't like him in Spider-Man. 
fucking love him in anything. Mm. Yeah. He's quality. Jake Gyllenhaal can do no wrong, if I'm being honest. So, Go on then, Dan. Oh. What's one of yours? One sec. One sec. We're sick. We're thick. We're thick. Um, oh. Lizzie's oh. been thinking of some, some filth about you, Nick. <clears throat> Weird to see him now since I had a dream of him last night. Oi, oi. Pair being good. Um, oh, see, I struggle with this because there's, there's, there's a death in a comic book that was portrayed completely different on film. Okay. which I thought was brilliant, and that's Laurie in Walking Dead. So All right. in the comic book, she was shot by one of the governor's men. But yeah. Then, obviously, in the program, she died during childbirth. Now, I thought it was a brilliant scene. Brilliant scene. All, all because yeah. of yeah. Yeah, the, the reaction. Yeah. Of her. It shaped the characters yeah. in a different way as well. Yeah. The impact of that was felt across like the characters didn't grew them as well yeah i thought it was really good as well the, mate. the only reason that they changed it was because of how graphic the death in the comic book was because it's not only did it kill her it killed the baby as well yeah um, they couldn't really yeah. show on the show um and the baby actually then grows up in the show i mean i stopped watching it after a while but the, you know the the uh the baby yeah, I'm, I'm with you and I, st- I, st- I stopped i stopped a few seasons in. like i think i stopped about season seven i think i stopped about season five I got to the end of the one with Negan when they when uh, Negan was in it, and then yeah. I stopped. So the last two seasons, I've not seen it. But uh, yeah, no, it's, that's a that's a really good um, a really good twist and really good adaptation because they couldn't they couldn't do what they did in the comic because it's just so graphic because mm. uh, it is a super graphic moment as well. Um, mm. But they did the um, Glenn bat scene justice. With the that eye, yeah. with the mm. eye pop and everything, it was a bit. Um, <laughs> oh, hard a bit. To watch that. It was a bit. It's hard to stomach. Yeah, like it took me a while to get over that. Um, because it was quite a shocking thing. Like was watching these people that you love just on their knees begging for their life, and you know someone's going to get it. And if you've watched the comic books, you know exactly who's going to get mm. it and how. And um, Neil, Neil actually texted me during that scene and said he had to stop masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a tough you one, but I got through it though. Didn't we? we got through it though, didn't we, mate? <laughs> got through it we told it, each other through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You're sick. I've mm-hmm. been away for three weeks and uh, I've come back to this. You disgust me. Yeah, <laughs> that's why Neil got the yeah, uh, real good. super dry top on. Super that's dry. That's the only way he likes it. <laughs> And I, keep, I keep them dry. <laughs> <laughs> and what's one of yours? One of my favourite comic book scenes. Hmm. It's got to be, um, and it's purely purely because of the experience that I had in it. And and to be fair, though, it is a banging scene. Um, and it's one of those scenes where you watch it and you kind of get goosebumps every time. But it's when um, it's in Endgame and you've got Cap against all odds, is standing against Thanos, his shield has been smashed to shit. And then um, everyone starts to come in behind him, and then you get like everyone coming back, and, the, yeah. and it tracks down all the all the the superheroes, and he screams Avengers, and then like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. oh, it's the music My... as well, like the music top. Yeah, well. gosh, that is, yeah. I, and because because of the fact that we watched it in a, a cinema that was pretty much like <clears> a <throat> concert, like I will never ever forget that shit. It was incredible. Um, and it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. It gives me kind of goosebumps watching it every single time. I kind of get that tingly feeling in the back of my neck because it's just amazing. Oh, cool. Uh, so Neil, yeah, so I'm gonna go all the way back to Superman one for me, Gee. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that very first scene where he rescues Lois and catches the helicopter, really the way he catches it in one arm, the music, the way that the scene plays out, it's just amazing for me. Like I used to watch this as a kid and like I used to go crazy for it. Like, yeah, for me, this started the whole comic book obsession off for me. Like, yeah, 
iconic. Yeah, it's 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 a great scene. Um, I think it's probably one of them first big superhero scenes that came on the big screen. Yeah, and it, it's... I can imagine back in the day that was like, boy, what is going on here? Yeah, like amazing. Like, oh my god, what are these special effects? Yeah. Well, yeah, like it really had an impact at the time, and it did on me as a kid. So yeah. So my that was a great Love one, it. by the way. My next one is Blade. Oh, yes. Oh, maybe. So, so, as soon, yes. As soon as soon as he's got his power back, and he makes that, and then he jumps down, and the music kicks in. Yes. Yeah, you, you you know Wesley is ready to go. Yes, that is um, a, a banging movie as well. And he's got a great, he's got like a great one liner finisher just before he yeah. kicks that, um, kicks the needle into Frost's head. He's like, "Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here." Yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Go on, go on, I Wesley. That. Absolutely love it. The the, the yeah, music, the, the night, music just throughout the whole film is awesome. The nightclub scene, yeah. like Operation. Blue yeah, and that. Around. Yeah, banger, absolute banger. Yeah, uh, yeah, I must have so seen Barry that nightclub scene about a million times. <laughs> yeah, it is brilliant. So, Baz, I was listening to a bit of uh, Dinosaur Man. Yes, yes. So I was on there, and that came out what a couple of days ago, and we we're talking about uh, my film festival. So they gave me uh, three three films. To choose out of um, whatever category I wanted um, and discuss it and stuff like that. So I chose my greatest film of all time, which was Jaws, um, Modern Masterpiece, which was Inception, and uh, favorite performance from favorite actor, which was Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal in it. So if you haven't listened to it, go and listen because it's wicked. We had a good, we had a good laugh. Yeah, I need to. Uh, I need to have a listen. Have a, have um, a listen. I think I'm going to go on at some point. Um, so I just need to sort it out with them. So, um, yeah. And Lizzie, yeah, we'll uh, come back to uh, that one because I don't think I agree. Um, oh, you're stepping on. You're stepping on the toes of Cavill there. Oh. I am. Yes. Um, uh, so, what's one of yours? And I'm just. There's just so many. Like, there's just so many. Um, one of them, one of the the ones I really love, and it's because it's probably like one of my favorite movies, um, is, um, Burton's Batman, like like Keaton, Keaton is Batman, uh, the Joker, uh, Jack Nicholson is the Joker, but it's the, the art gallery sequence. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, where Joker's just going around. Joker yeah. comes in and he's vandalizing all the stuff and he's killed everyone and he's given Vicky Vale the, the gas mask, which is the coolest gas mask in the world, by the way. Um, yeah, just with the Prince music in the background and it's just it's one of those that just just sticks with you. Um, and the music is wicked and Nicholson plays that type of Joker just to a T. Um, I just love that sequence so much. Like I could watch that. I mean, as a child, I did. I just watched it over and over and over again. Um, but I absolutely love that. And there's nothing it's, uh... about it. There's nothing like exciting happening or anything. It's just wicked. <laughs> it's just a, a wicked sequence with a bit of prints. Yeah. Yes. Oh hey, the new Crimson <clears throat> Town. Yeah, it's just incredible. It's just wicked. It is awesome. And uh, also, so, the, um, a, 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 there is a scene in that movie where Bruce Wayne goes a bit mad just before the Joker shoots him as Bruce Wayne, and he's got the the thing on here where he starts, he starts screaming, "You want to get nuts?" <clears throat> and just as he screams, like, "Come on, let's get nuts!" Like you hear Beetlejuice, like yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. That way mm. the Beetlejuice talks all the time. So the next time you watch that, listen out for it because I can guarantee. All you hear is Beetlejuice when he screams. It's wicked. Yeah, I do love uh, 1989 Batman. Yeah, uh, so good. Neil, what's your next one? Next one for me is going to be the opening chase scene from uh, Dread, uh, the Carl Urban Dread. Uh, love it because I, I was always a fan of the comic books when I was little. 
and obviously there was the Stallone version of the film that came out and I enjoyed it as a kid but it wasn't really like true to what George Dredd was and going into this film I was like hoping it was going to be a good film and this opening sequence was just blew me away I knew I was in for a good ride and I was and it was just it just encompassed everything that the previous Judge Dredd with Stallone missed and encompassed into yeah. that character I knew that it was going to be a good film from then it turned out to be an absolute banger um so yeah I just I'd go for Dredd yeah nice choice yeah. Uh, really good film as well Carl Urban yeah. is decent in 3D in yeah like he, he is Judge Dredd like without a shadow of a doubt like he plays it so well Right. right, he's got the best chin. Yeah, in he is like, yeah, <laughs> he, he, he's really how he good. managed to keep that face the entire time as well. Like, his chin must have been wrecking, but yeah, the end, like, just like stretching his face, wicked. Really yeah. good. Did, movie. You, ever really did really you ever watch it in 3D? No. I've only, yeah, I've, really, I've still really got it. Yeah, 3D. I still watch it every now and again, like the 3D, and it was really, really good. Like, really good. The slow mo scenes with the with the drugs and stuff is just mm. mind yeah. blowing. Um, um, if anyone, if anyone has seen dread, but hasn't seen the raid, do yourself and the rest of the world a favor and go and watch the raid because they're pretty much the same movie. One was a massive Hollywood hit dread. The raid yeah. was not so m much of a hit, but equally as good. I agree. hundred percent. Raid is um, yeah, banging. My next one is Boom. Oi. Oh, yes. From Logan. So when uh, it's all going slow and he's trying to get through it and he's just slicing and dicing. Love this scene. Love the film. What did you guys think of this scene? I... I, it was, it was the same is the same kind of impression I got throughout the entire movie. Like the opening scene to Logan, like when it was when it was you know being made and and when it then started to come out, it was kind of like oh my god, this is the the Logan we want to see. This is the Wolverine we want to see and stuff like that. And I'm like okay, yeah, it's going to be a bit violent, but we'll see how it goes. But the like the opening scene where he's like gets woken up at that limo and he like then like destroys those guys outside of it like it, sh it opens with such a bang like chopping arms off getting yeah. shot with like shotguns and stuff like that and i was like yeah. whoa and it's kind of that you kind of get that impression the entire way through you just kind of like yeah. whoa this is violent as as it can get really it was the way that wolverine should have been from the beginning though like yeah. that's what his yeah. character is and it was just to see him finally just go berserk was yeah amazing yeah mad. Yeah. The um the the scene that I really like in that is where he gets injected with the the um the wasma jig and he's running through the woods and he like you yeah, said he's going mental as uh, he is going eight shit and he's just hacking away at everything yeah um but the ending of that movie is real as well I never I never expected to feel the way that I felt at the ending of that movie like it was like a a proper a proper ending. It felt yeah. like it was a done thing now. Um, mm. And it was really sad because it's like it's like that kind of uh, X-Men arc and those characters have been there for a long time. Mm. And they're like a big part of your kind of like X-Men journey. Um, yeah, and it yeah. didn't feel quite final, um, which was a little sad, but it was a great movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. Carl Urban is brilliant in the boys. I agree. Yes, I can't wait for that to come back. Series. Is that that's back this week, isn't it? Uh, you say, I think well, you it's say, you oh say no, it's he's been brilliant in the boys, but his accent was pretty. Yeah, shocking. his accent. Yeah, it was a bit off. He, 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 I'll let him off because um, <laughs> he's Carl Urban. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's uh, he's decent. Ravi's in. Ravi. So there's a scene, um, a, a scene that um, has just popped into my head, actually. Um, yeah. It was actually in Wonder Woman. I loved Wonder Woman. I thought it was really, really good. No Man's Land. No Man's Land in Wonder Woman, mate. Awesome so scene. So good. Just, just so the music good. as well. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of, a lot of these scenes um, that are iconic scenes or scenes that stick in my mind about... Um, 
comic book movies do have a really good score attached to it or really good soundtrack attached to it. And it makes yeah. it just that little bit better. Like that No Man's Land scene is it's just wicked. Like you yeah. feel that you feel the tension, you feel it building up and you just you like edging your way through the entire way, like wanting it to get further and further. It's just a really it's like a really powerful scene for like for women as well. Like it's a really yeah. like an empowering scene. Um, it's an empowering movie to be fair. Um, she's really, really good in it, but yeah, Wonder Woman's yeah. The, the entire movie is a banger. Like it really is a good movie. Um, Go didn't expect dark, it, but that seemed like, dark. didn't it? Yeah. I didn't have high expectations for it, but it was really good. Smashed it. I've not got high expectations for the next one. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to the new trailer to see what uh, what comes out of it. Yeah. And uh, Neil, what have you got? Another one? No, that was it. That was it for me. <laughs> yeah. So one of my other ones was Man of Steel. So this was the terraforming scene. Um, so the reason why I like this one is he's holding back the waves, and then it keeps flicking back to. Lawrence Fishburne trying to get the woman out of the rubble mm-hmm. um, and, and the cars are come in, the music's going off and you can see him trying and then he just gets to the point of where he's just like, yeah, we're going to die. So he just sticks his hand out to just comfort each other as they're going to mm-hmm. die. Um, and then you've got then Superman just blast up and just smash it out. But I think everything, the, the music, the way he's holding it, uh, the Lawrence Fishburne scene, um, yeah, I, that that is easily one of my favourite scenes. Absolutely love that scene. Do you, want to tell, do, you want, do you want me to tell you why I hate that scene? Why? Because that goes against everything that suit. Like, if if you're gonna have one weakness, have the weakness. Uh, yeah. this is, I've had this argument and conversation with so many people about Superman. Is that like Superman's one weakness is kryptonite or exposure to? Uh, uh, um, crypt, uh, kryptonite or the, the 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 atmosphere around Krypton, which is essentially what that's changing yeah. into, right? He yeah, becomes yeah, yeah. no longer powerful because he's exposed to that atmosphere. When you put him in that position, and then he then overcomes that, he then overcomes his one weakness. So that weakness becomes then null and void. Therefore, he has no weakness indestructible kryptonite is no longer used against him or can no longer be used against him it pisses me off that he has only got that one weakness and he was able to defeat it it's like now what what can kill him now oh hang on kryptonite that one thing that he's vulnerable to that he <clears throat> picks and chooses when he's vulnerable to it annoys me yeah. probably a lot more than it should and I, you probably can tell by this little rant that it annoys me probably <laughs> more than it should but it does nonetheless it's just movie rules, isn't it? Like bullshit. You get it in some superhero is. films, don't you? Where like superpowers are inconsistent and and stuff like that. It just happens. So you have to yeah. suspend your disbelief sometimes. It's just, <laughs> it's just the one. It's, I, it's the the only one thing I dislike about Man of Steel. It's the only one thing I dislike about Man of Steel. Like I really, really enjoy Man of Steel, but then I'm like that one bit, and I'm like, but it's his only weakness. So how does he overcome it? Like because then he has no weaknesses, right? Mm. It's okay, Anthony. No, no, it's not okay. We can talk. We can talk. We can talk. Um, so Jackie says, "I love the way Wonder Woman changes the editing on fight scenes with the slowed down action." Yeah, that was yep. very yeah, cool. Yeah, that was cool. Our Umbrella yeah, Academy, really... I definitely to check that yeah. boy out. Get on that the first season. Yeah, Still not good. watched any of it. Get on it, uh, honestly. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> the little girl in Logan reminds me of my daughter. Scowl. Yep, yeah, that's the scene, Jackie. Definitely yeah. love that one. Uh, I'd say his other weakness is he's not supposed to kill people, kind of like Batman. Yeah, but I get the the whole killing Zod. Like, I get that. I, I kind of get that. Um, yeah, yeah. But the, the, what I cannot and will not and shall not forgive is the weakness thing, like like his physical weakness. I just can't. I can't do it. So I'll tell you another 
one that I really liked is, and this is my last one. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Um, just because it was so unexpected <clears throat> that he was just going to annihilate him just with a swipe of his hand. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and I loved the sort of look of Dr. Manhattan because when I got it on Blu-ray, it looked amazing and you can see all the, the detail in his eyes. It looked like a little planet inside his eyes. You just love that floppy blue dick, don't you? That's funny, <laughs> I it? did. <laughs> little floppy semi going on. Um, no, I, everywhere. Love I love that scene. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. I also like the, um, the Rorschach flashback scene where he's talking about how he... Um, completely like messes up that pedo kind of weirdo guy where the, he's got the hatchet yeah. and he's just like burying it into that dude's head um yeah. love that scene in watchman awesome one of the scene. other scenes, scenes that i um really really liked is it's because i've I, I wasn't expecting it when um i watched um batman versus superman oh yeah so batman versus superman as we know has its um issues should we say it yeah, had yeah, yeah. ups and downs um but one of the things that i was not expecting to see when i watched it was the death of superman i wasn't yeah. expecting that at all um and i thought that they did the death of superman quite well although it still lends into the whole he picks and chooses when he's vulnerable to kryptonite um but i think that they did the death of superman well considering i wasn't expecting to see it um yeah yeah everyone knows that in the comic books that that the doomsday does kill superman but i wasn't expecting it to happen in this movie like i was if if it was ever going to happen i thought it was going to be a bigger thing that happened in a different movie i never expected it to be incorporated into this one um <laughs> but um yeah i um i really really liked the way that they did the death of superman because you kind of like go wait what <laughs> yeah 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 uh like when he kills president lex luthor and it ruins the timeline and Flash 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 do it. yeah and he loved that yeah. floppy blue dick <laughs> you, nick does love <laughs> dr manhattan's floppy blue dick that's what he loves who didn't and imagine when he grew up to that fucking giant <laughs> yeah. <Your> neck <laughs> statue <laughs> Ain't no little right. fucking dick then, is it? Flipping out. Uh, <laughs> right, okay, so... Oh. Everyone's fave sci-fi book that would be great made into a film. Yeah, Lizzie, I've got I've got an answer to that, but unfortunately it was made into a film and it was a shit film. Uh, <laughs> Ready Player One. I love the book mm. of Ready Player One. I've, ne I've never read it. Um... Yeah. And I say that it's I say that it's a shit film. Um but it's probably not if you've not read the book. Like it's probably a good film if you've if you've not read the book because it's very, it's basically like a like a geek's wet dream that, that film is. Like it's just like if you if you uh, love anything to do with the eighties or love anything to do with uh pop culture or um comic books or anything along those lines gaming or anything it is like a it's like a wet dream for you but if you've read the book mm. um you'll know that they go so in such a different direction in the movie like they take it completely different and it ruins it for you because the book is so unbelievably good um yeah it left me with a bit of a uh, a sour taste in my mouth when i watched the film like, I, when i first watched the film i rated it like a four out of 10 um i watched it the second time over and i enjoyed it more the second time um because i knew what i was getting into but when i first watched it i was just like no nah. yeah but that's my answer to that lizzie <clears throat> uh i've so much to say about death of superman film versus comic versus animation mm. hit hit us up jackie let us know your feelings mm. Come on, we're, we're, all, we're all friends. Yeah. Uh, so Jackie says, the film is shit because it's young adult for sci-fi. Mm -hmm. They dulled it down. They 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 just, they watered it down so much and, and changed it. For, and considering Ernest Klein, who wrote the book, was actually um, 
help write the screenplay for the film as well, which made mm. me made me even more confused because I was like, how is the author of the book writing this? Like, mm. how how are you okay with that? Um, especially when there's such good material in the book to use, and. I, I don't know if it was down to whether or not it was actually doable because a lot of the stuff in the book is a little far fetched because you know you're talking quite sci fi stuff. But I'm like, there's nothing you can't do in movies these days. Like, there's nothing you can't yeah. do. Yeah. Um, so especially a, a movie with the budget the size that it had, and you know, for Christ's sake, that like was Spielberg directed it. So you know, he's got some clout there. I mean, if there's anyone that can get anyone to do anything, it'll be Spielberg, surely. They yeah. filmed it in um, Birmingham as well, didn't they? Was I filmed some of it in yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that contributed to the quality of the film. It's just a random fact for you. <laughs> I think as well what um, Liz has put there is that it's all done for them. I think they try yeah. to be creative or try and do something different, but it just doesn't work. Um, and that's why people sometimes favour the book uh, or books over a film. Mm. Uh, the focused group that film after he contributed to the script hard to say i think they dumbed it down too much for sales i think yeah i, I agree which is sad really because i think the book if had they adapted the book the way that the book was read I, the way <coughs> the book is i think that it would have been received better because it's just a better story yeah, yeah. it also annoyed me yeah. how they dumbed down nolan sorrento in it as well the, the villain in it because in the book he's like uh, it's a really high level kind of villain where he's like you get the sense that he is this ceo that he's this big powerful guy and that he is he's he's deserving of his position in his company you know and stuff like that whereas they made him out to be like a bumbling idiot in the film um yeah it's annoyance like how does how does someone like that get to the position that he's in like, i don't that doesn't make sense but in the book he's like this really intimidating kind of guy um and they turned him into a like, comedic value almost in the uh, in the film, which was annoying. Yeah. Right. Shall we go on to the next topic? Uh, you can still Lessons keep talking about that. this one, um, but this next one is: <clears throat> How much does a fragrance make an impression? So, what I'm thinking is: <clears throat> so if you're, I don't know, doing a, an interview with someone. And that person comes in wearing a sexy fragrance. Would you favour them over someone who's done as good with an interview? Depends on the fragrance, I guess. Um, and I suppose that's that answers the question. Like, does it make yeah. an impression? Yes, it does. Like, because if someone comes in smelling a shit, like literal, literal shit. I mean, it's not a fragrance, but it is a you are fragrant. Um, but you know, you go. It's going to leave a lasting impression. Of course, it is. And I suppose it all really depends on the setting as well. So, if it's like a if it's like a work interview, then you would hope that it doesn't it doesn't sway an opinion because you you want to be kind of noticed for your ability to be able to do the job rather than your ability to please them in with a with a smell but people associate smells with certain things so if yeah. they if they smell something that is uh that makes them think of something else or whether or not they smell something and it reminds them of, of something which gives them a good vibe then maybe that will leave a lasting impression or kind of sway them in their their decision making especially from an interview perspective i don't know yeah um but if you were talking mm. about kind of like uh everyday kind of stuff um it, it's it's hard to i think it does leave an impression i think a lot of the time it leaves more negative impressions than it does positive impressions which is sad hmm. really do you think because um, you'll get you'll get the comments of, you'll get the comments like oh my god have you bathed in that or yeah oh my god i could smell you a mile or you smell like when or you smell like a when, or, food bar when, yeah exactly when all you've done is put on like your regular like three sprays or something like that it's just that because it's a strong fragrance people are just kind of like whoa and it's usually by people that don't wear fragrances because they're not used yeah. to smelling such strong smells yeah. 
Um, but you, I do find that the the everyday person would be very quick to kind of criticize a strong smelling person, whether that's a good or a bad one, mm. just because they do smell strongly. <laughs> yes, Ravi. Um, all I could smell was my keyboard because I did it over the internet. 21st century. Um, 21st century. Yeah, 21st century interviewing, digital. Um, do you think a – we talk about compliments and stuff like that. Do you think a fragrance can make someone seem more attractive? Yes. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd definitely say so. Depending on the fragrance, if, if it's something like really horrible and overpowering, they, they, yeah, it would definitely. You'd make a decision either way. Yeah, people are, like, people are enticed by their senses, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So, like, senses and, 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 is a big one, right? Like, like, because Barry even says better than smelling a BO. Like, if you get close to someone, like, if you're yeah. in a, I don't know, you're in a group of friends or you're in a, a club or a bar or something like that, you get close to someone, you've had a few drinks and stuff like that, people are more likely to kind of be drawn into you, I think. Um, especially when their uh, inhibitions are down and uh, they're they're a little bit more free, because you're not going to get a lot of people that are just be like, "You smell fantastic." Um, but you might <laughs> you do? <laughs> but you might do if they've had a drink or two. So in the right setting, I think that people are a little bit more um, positive towards you when it comes to, um, to to fragrances, and I think that they're a little bit more drawn to you and find you a little bit more attractive if they can associate your what they're liking in you with a scent. I think um, Alien used to mess me up when I used to go out drinking. Yeah, you should, your bone is just chasing it. You'd be like, <laughs> who's, got, who, who's got that on? <laughs> Where's that coming from? Uh, absolutely loved it. So, yeah, I think I agree that um, it, it does. It, it can have... a. Uh, an impact in terms of uh, making people seem more attractive just by that sort of yeah, scent because, trail. Because you can you can smell people before you even like see them, and even if you don't, yeah. even if you don't find them physically attractive, um, yeah. you can find you can find something attractive about the way that they smell. Like, it, yeah. I suppose it all really goes on go, boils down to whether or not you're a shallow person or whether you're just not a shallow person that's probably a bit harsh but whether or not you just um you rate people solely on their looks or not yeah you know, the, you know you, a, attractiveness is is quite complex isn't it you can find someone attractive yeah. by never really even speak never really really even kind of like seeing someone face to face just by the the way that they are um even through like phone call text message like you, someone could have an attractive voice so, like, attraction is 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 quite complex. So, you you boil it all in. Like, yeah, a, a fragrance could make someone seem more attractive. Definitely. Yeah. So, Jackie says it depends on the scent and the situation. Has been said now. I have instantly bonded with someone when realised we both love fragrances. Mm -hmm. Like-minded yeah. people. Uh, when I was nightclubbing as a youngster. I was like the bistro kid hunting down that woman with the nice smelling frag on. You were <laughs> animal, Barry. He's put bisto, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's put, if you're attractive, you're attractive. Yeah. Uh, Ravi, scents don't make people more attractive. They just smell better. Hopefully. If you ever need someone to make your office smell nice, just give Ravi a call. Get he'll be your in. he'll be your air freshener for the office. Get that club in a wee out. You smell fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you imagine that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that um, YouTube video? He's like a prankster. Um, and all yeah. he keeps doing, can I smell you, sir? Can I smell you? Give me a sniff. It's hilarious. Have Everyone's you... just like, what the fuck are you doing? Is that, 
Have you seen the one where he just like pops up behind the ear and just goes? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the reactions are quality on that. It's just like looking yeah. at me, like. I love I love it where he's just like stands next to someone and he's just having a little sniff of the neck. Yeah. And they're like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Especially in like a supermarket and there's someone shopping and he's having a quick sniff. The women a woman wearing a nice fragrance would be more memorable than one with a nice handbag. Yeah, because it's it, yeah, it, it entices the, the senses. Definitely. You you are Ravi. Beauty is in the Beauty. <laughs> Eye the beholder, horses for courses and all that. Oh, oh Ravi. Horses for courses. Sweet talker. Horses for horses. In the same way that someone's same personality and intelligence can make them more attractive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It all, it all, it's, a, it's a combination of things, isn't it? And I think a fragrance can, can be a contributing factor um, to that. Is there a magic fragrance that can make Trump more attractive? Definitely. Cyanide. Cyanide. There's got to Office be. for men. Office for men. Get Jeremy over there. Get him all suited and booted. And Trump is ready to go. Yeah, give him give him give him cyanide. That'll work. <laughs> Trump has got his own fragrance. He does, he does. He's got a fragrance line, Ooh. I believe. Ugh. I'm sure he has. Should, sure we, should, we, think, should we get some I think of it? Barry's got one. Barry's got some. Barry bought Does it. it smell of farts? Barry, Barry actually got some. <laughs> yeah, it smells of like fake tan, bit of ginge. Really? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's definitely got some. Barry's got everything. He secretly bought it, but he doesn't like to tell people. Yes, it's called Miracle. Oh, of course it is. Or Trump the Fragrance. I'm just looking on Amazon now. It's unavailable. Trump Sold out. the Fragrance. Yeah. That's it smells like fake tan. Obviously not uh, centered towards a British market, that one. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Smells like Trump like means what <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. With some crumbs as well. Ugh. Oh god! Right, okay. Uh, face, if there's one huh? face on this planet, it makes me want to punch it immediately. <laughs> that man. Right. Next topic. To Best movie Ooh. letdown. Right. So, uh, oh, <laughs> I'll start off with my first one. Jupiter Ascending was a big, massive fart of a film. Uh, oh, a great so steaming pile yeah. of shit that was. Yeah. So the trailer, what the when it first came was out, that I, was shit? Like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, this this looks all right. And then went to the cinema to watch it, and I was like, shall I walk out? Shall I finish it? It was just <sighs> such a waste. I went to watch this for my birthday and it ruined my birthday. Like I just went home and cried. <laughs> it was that shit. <laughs> Neil, what was yours? Yeah. Uh, I, I'd have to go with uh, Batman versus Superman, man. I was really disappointed. <gasps> by really bad. How dare you? How dare Boys. you get off the stream right now? I, I've always said it. I've, I've not. I've, I just didn't like this film. Like when, when, because uh, it was Affleck's first appearance when it was Batman. Yeah, man. And when yeah. he was first announced, I, I I didn't like the idea of it. I was against it. And then you know when the set photos and stuff started coming out, and we saw the trailers, and I started to get really hyped for it. I proper like turned around for this one. I was properly excited, and it was just shit. I just didn't enjoy it. Like the whole Martha thing, like ruined it for me. I was like, that was just the stupidest thing ever. Like, how would you resolve? Like the whole film is like the dispute between you two, and you're just gonna fucking resolve it because the mums have got the same name, like. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> Fucking give your head a wobble, mate. Like, no. Just honestly, like, proper annoyed me. But yeah, Batman versus give Superman. Give it a wobble. Give it a wobble. <laughs> give it a wobble, 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 mate. Really uh, annoying. <laughs> I will. Um, I will say, Nick, that picture, like, uh, Batflex got the cow going on in that picture. 
that you get that, look get that look a beast. That, yeah, look like that. beastie that in that chin. Video. Amazing. Like just oh, it's so annoying. It just it was just shit. <laughs> One of the best Batman going, mate. One of the best Batman's going. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's the film may be rubbish, but he he yeah, was a no, good Batman. I will give him props for that. Like, I I remember saying to you, Nick, when Affleck was first announced, I was like, this this is like a really bad idea. Like, I don't think he could pull it off. And then, yeah, I really th I thought he did pull it off. Like, eventually, I thought he was one of the best Batman, but the film was just dreadful, dreadful for me. Mm. Mr. Really. Uh, Mr. Anthony. <laughs> so, in the same now. vein, in in the same vein, um, I will be going into the world of DC. Oh, um, hey. oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Okay, so it's one or two, and I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with. I'm, to be fair, I'll probably come back round to the to the other one. Um, but I'm I'm going with Suicide Squad. Uh, yeah. I was massively, massively let down with Suicide Squad. Uh, it looked like it was going to promise so much, mm. uh, especially after the trailers. The trailers to that movie were so good. Like the first one yeah. with its dark. First in, one was the best. It really eerie creepy and song. really creepy, and you were like, "Is that the way that they're going with this?" Because that that yeah. was freaking awesome. And then it had the Joker laugh in the background, and then the second one went very, very different, where it went all kind of like crazy, and it had Queen, and then it was um, it was all madness. And I was like, "Okay, if that's the way that they're going with this, I can really get on board with that as well." And then I'm like, the movie came out, and I was just like the fucking hell are we watching here like yeah it's not like the the movie feels like a like a music video like what is going on and i know what is going on now like now after years after it's been released and everything like that the, the reason that it was as bad as it was is because that the the creators of the movie never got a say in what was actually in the final cut it was all shipped out to a uh, a trailer uh, editing company to edit the movie and what we got was a steaming pile of horse piss it was just yeah. so so bad even even the the, the blu-ray dvd release uh, and it gave the additional like director's cut in it um and it gave us what maybe three or four new scenes um one with the joker um and the rest of it were like scenes that were like was that in the original or not? Like, who cares? Like, it, it, it's not. It's just not a memorable movie, yeah. and it, I was just really, really upset that, that that was what we got because I was, I was super, super pumped for it. Like everything about it, I was super pumped. Like even to the to the point where the fact that we only got like six or seven minutes of the Joker broke my heart like completely yeah, yeah. broke my heart because that whole advertising campaign was, it got to the point where it was almost solely based upon the Joker and Harley and you got a shit on the Harley. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. About two minutes of Joker. And, and then it was just like, okay, now he's gone. And I'm like, is that, is that literally just to get bums on seats? Is it literally yeah. just a selling tactic? Cause if it is well done, but you're, you're you know, go suck a bag of dicks. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it just it just frustrated me because it promised so much and delivered so little. Fully agree. Fully agree. R Ravi's put Force Awakens. Um, oh, I've just seen a Doom comment. Patrol. I've just seen a comment there. Ravi said Suicide Squad was shit. The animated film was better. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Suicide Squad, the film was terrible. There's an animated movie called Batman: uh, Assault on Arkham, which basically does the Suicide Squad movie. Yeah million times better they should have just done that mm. doom patrol absolutely love doom patrol yeah i've, I'm, um, I've been watching it this week been uh really really the good series, proper good it, it doesn't get um for me it doesn't get enough uh exposure or love um and it's really good i think you've got stuff like umbrella academy the boys and stuff like that get quite a lot of shout outs um whereas i think do doom patrol has been a bit on the back burner um but yeah if you've not if anyone's not watched it definitely go watch it i'm looking forward to checking out season two but yeah um, yeah he's, he's yeah, really he's good funny in it. In it. yeah he's good really good in it robot man um, I, th I think you'd really like it and 
Yeah, I've not I've not watched any of it. Really good. Really on, good. It's on uh, Star Plays, I think it's on over here. Yeah. On Amazon. Uh, okay, so the best Superman is easy. 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 Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Number one. Easily. Christopher yes. Reeve. Henry Cavill Neil. is Neil. Superman. Like no matter what he's in, how he speaks. What he does, who he interacts with, that man was made. That Henry Cavill was born. His his life's purpose <laughs> is to be Clark Kent. His life purpose is to be Superman. Henry Cavill is Superman. Neil. Well, yeah, no, he's a good anymore. Superman. Don't get me wrong. He's a good <laughs> Superman, but he's the best. Superman. Christopher Reeve's the, the best. best. No, like Christopher Reeve couldn't really be in anything else because he he played he was just Superman. Like Henry Cavill, he could go and do other things. Like he was great in The Witcher. Cavill. He was bit, Mission Impossible. He didn't even think like he was Superman in the, those films. Yeah, Whereas he, he, he did. Yeah, he did. No, Christopher Reeve <laughs> was just Superman. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, like I just, I think that he, he is the living embodiment of Superman. Like yeah. everything that you would imagine Superman is to look like from, yeah, Christopher uh, Reeve. aesthetics. The, the, <laughs> yeah, Christopher Reeve is like just like flat. Like Cavill is just like he is. He is a god amongst men. Like to look at physically when you look yeah, at yeah, his, okay. when you look at his, and you look at his physique, like that man is Superman. Like yeah. to a T. I mean, the yeah. hairy chest, I don't know whether or not Superman would have a hairy chest. I think Superman probably wouldn't grow hair on his chest. He might I think slip. he did. He did in the comic. That's why he had the hairy chest in it. Oh, probably. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. A bit but, of waxing. But, yeah, like... I, 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 think... I, I, grew, up, I grew up with Christopher Reeve, and you yeah. can't doubt that he's awesome. Um, but I think Henry's sort of come into his own generation he he's this generation superman um whereas i'm i'm in between the both so i'm, mm -hmm. I'm i was there with the christopher reeve but i'm also there with the the henry cavill um but i prefer the style of henry cavill to christopher reeve yeah because the he's thing my, the he's thing about, my vision the thing about superman. superman is i've i've never really i've never really enjoyed superman as a character like on film, like I've never really been drawn to it. Like I have been Batman or Spider-Man or, you know, anyone else. Like I've, I've never really been kind of like, going, uh, who's my favorite superhero. I've never gone. Oh yeah. Superman. The first Superman that I really enjoyed was Cavill. First okay. Superman that I really got on board with was Cavill. Um, so that, I think that's why he is my Superman because he's the first one I've actually enjoyed. Oh, that's fair. And so that's not got, uh, Christopher Reeve is not a good Superman. I mean, I mean, for all that, intents and purposes, Christopher Reeve is Superman. He is everyone's yeah. first and only Superman. I, even I, a lot of people in the comments that are disagreeing with me and Nick wholeheartedly here. And a lot of people see Christopher Reeve. When you hear Christopher Reeve, you immediately think of Superman. Like you don't think, like you said, Neil, you don't think of anything else. Yeah. But not just not for me, unfortunately. Fair. Any of you boys watched uh, Teen Titans? Uh, no. I think I've started watching no. it. Yeah, I'm about halfway through season one again on that one. Yeah. Enjoying it so far. Uh, the Batman with Arnie, with Mr. Freeze. Yeah, pile of crap. Neil, yeah. so what was your next uh, letdown? Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, another one. Like, I watched this film. I was really looking forward to this film. And. I sat in the cinema and I just did not understand what the fuck was going on the whole way through, whole way through and it was Cloud Atlas. What like I was really like a massive Wachowski's fan. I love the Matrix and everything. Uh, so I was really looking forward to this one. I mean that Street Racer one was a bit okay. And then this came out and it was just just, just too many layers to it. I didn't understand. I, like I I just felt stupid watching this film, so I just did not get it. And I just I, yeah. Can't be my fault. I'm not that stupid. Isn't isn't Cloud Atlas the one where the the like Disney own own like the rights to all movies and they call movies Disney's? Is that the one? I, th 
I can't. There was so much to it. Like I can't really remember. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like like Disney like monopolized the the movie industry completely, and they start. I mean, pretty much like they're starting to do now. But they like people refer to films or movies as Disney's. I'm pretty sure it's that. Yeah. Might be weird. Sounds like weird. something crazy this film would do. Yeah, I mean, it's very Wachowski esque. Mm. Uh, Birds of Prey, yeah, that was a letdown for me. Um, I've not seen it yet. Yeah, it's it's just a bit of a mess uh, of the film. I, um, I have I have no words for that movie. Like, yeah. I, I I yeah, just don't good. understand. Like Harley Quinn in it is. I mean, you get what you get. I feel like even though that she's only really been in two movies now, like you <clears> get what. Get with with Margot Robbie was Harley Quinn. You know you're going to get a good version of Harley Quinn. Or I think she's a good yeah, version she's of no, Harley Quinn anyway. She's, but she's got Black Mask in, in Black Mask in Birds of Prey was just like, what are, what are we doing here? Like what literally what are we doing here? Black Mask is a very very hard villainous character in the DC world, and they turn him into this stroppy, petulant child like character that I just don't understand. At all was it? Was it you and McGregor? I was that was in that. Yeah, yeah. And when I heard that you and McGregor could be him, I thought, okay, you and McGregor is a decent actor. We, we might get yeah. a good rendition here. But what we got was just—it was mind-boggling. Like I just don't understand the choice at, at, at all. Yes, um, Alien vs Predator. Yeah, massive letdown. Oh yeah, 100%. no, Noel's frags works as. Is working on Doom Patrol. Very cool. Uh, oh, so I've what, just what remembered. Are you, what oh, what are you doing on that show, mate? Are you? Are you? What are you are doing? You, some behind the scenes stuff. Are, are you Brendan Fraser? Are you the robot? What was you going to say, Neil? Uh, I just remembered one that we got really disappointed about when we were younger. Um, yeah. We were really looking forward to it, and it was shit. Freddy versus Jason. Oh my we're, god! Freddy versus Jason. I remember we was really looking forward to that because we were mad, yeah. we love like Freddy. It was just terrible. They had like Kelly yeah. from um, what's her name from Destiny's, Destiny's Child. Child in it. She got cut in half. That was the best part of the film. Yeah, uh, but it was just nonsense. It was just shit. Yeah, you had Fre- Freddy doing some flipping Tony Jaw flying knees to Jason. And turning into a martial artist. <laughs> I never understood why Freddie became like a martial arts gangster in that movie. Like, yeah, like where yeah. did that come from? Yeah, that, like that, that was one of those well. movies that I, I loved to hate almost because it was like I hated it because it was shit, but like I could never stop watching it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Co- Cuban Groove, how you doing, mate? Uh, so I've got I another film. Pleasure. Another film that I was very disappointed with oh, fantastic four pile of shit. yeah you know what it was promising it should it have been promising. good then yeah i don't know midway it just went off its tits and just, just went in a totally different direction i i i, I walked out that yeah. movie and i went is it, is it finished that like, was is that just, it yeah. yeah um i mean there was only one really good scene in it uh, which like was really really good, and the rest of it was terrible. You know the bit where Doctor Doom's walking down that hallway, blowing everyone's and, uh, heads. Yeah, yeah, that like that was insane. Like that, he, he looked like a good bad guy. It was just the rest of the film was just handled really poorly. But it had so much potential, didn't it? And yeah, pants. Yep, yep. Terminator films, yes, um, definitely. I agree, Ravi. After number Terminator T- Two, T yeah, three was. It I really like Dark pissed Fate, me off though. Terminator Three. Dark, Dark Fate has got was... good. Um, yeah, it's got some good bits to it. Um, I, um, I think the first first scene. Yeah, that's the CGI bit. I am um, quite liked Terminator Salvation. If I'm being honest, um, it's, it's it's good for what it is, but I think the CGI Arnold pissed me off. Yeah, the, really yeah the, the, the annoyance to the, of that movie was the fact that they they kind of made the decision to go away from Arnie. Like they made the decision, they said, "Okay, we're going to have two new protagonists now, two new characters. Let's just focus on on these group of people." But then it was like 
and then they brought that in and it was just like oh come on just yeah. just stick with your decision and then the other thing about that movie is at the end they're like and that's just one of them and you're like oh so all of that was just for one little tiny piece of cog in this huge machine like you're never going to win like what the fuck yeah yeah did you have uh, another movie let down yeah of course I've got I another one go ahead uh, yeah um let's stay with dc shall we go for it you, you, yeah. online and more keep on knocking them out let's talk justice league yeah let's talk justice league because even though i did enjoy i'll say that in air quotations in very loose terms i enjoyed justice league i enjoyed it simply because of the uh the nostalgia feel and the little child in me wanted to enjoy it because of all these people, all my favorite characters are together on one screen. That's why I enjoyed it. What we got was a fucking mess. Yeah. What we got was a mess. It was the combination of two people with very, very different visions, very, very different choices, very, very mm. different um, styles, aesthetics, two people that couldn't be further apart in terms of their dec decision making and choices that they make mashed together to make one steaming hot pile of trash really i mean i can't really say it any more than that we're getting I mean, luckily we're getting justice nice little pun there oh. but we are getting just with with the, with the snyder cut and you know so. be four really? hours long be five hours long fuck it be a week long i don't care as long as i get what i was initially intended then I'm going to be happy. And then if it turns out that it's shit as well, then I can hold my hands up and go, it was always going to be shit. But at yeah, least yeah. give me the choice. Give me yeah. the option yeah. of, 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 of making it how it should have been made rather than rushing to get it made and saying, because this guy did so much good work on the Avengers and because he did so much good work with Marvel, let's bring it into to, to DC. It's never going to work. They're two very, yeah, very different beats. You're never going to get them. Uh, I think we, Joss Whedon knew that it wasn't going to be a great, a, a great film. I think one of the first shots in the film, there's a like a homeless person holding up a sign saying "I tried," which I think was maybe like a message from Joss Whedon to basically uh -huh. say, "Look, I've tried my best." Um, yeah, yeah, like I think it was just a, it was just a really bad situation, sort of behind the scenes, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. things were changed at the last minute, so you can sort of understand it, and I'm hoping that. Snyder Court, get, hopefully. Get get it, Snyder so. court. Uh, yeah. I just, yeah, there's just some decisions that were made that changed the, the entire narrative that I just can't, I can't yeah. abide by. It was can't. like the injection of, there was like random comedy bits that just didn't need to be in there. Like the tone would shift, like. But yeah, like it was totally, like just, the, the annoyance for me was that it was visibly noticeable as well. So like yeah. the reshoot, like it was visibly noticeable when you added in this thing that had been shot just for comedic value. You almost could still see the green glow of the green screen behind them. It was like, what the fucking hell are we? What? <laughs> and, 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 and and the mustache. Yes, not, I was about to say, oh. we talk about the biggest elephant in the room about what fucking hell? Justice League is the <laughs> disgusting face of henry cavill how did that like get past like any kind of like someone must have thought this because as soon as it came up on the screen i looked at nick i was like what the fuck man it just looks so weird like i think it they thought they would human. get away with it but they thought the the name was going to make them money and they thought they would, they didn't care about the fans they didn't care about anything they just chucked the film out and thought justice yeah. league is going to bring in money and it bit them in yeah. the arse I just, they should have just delayed it a year. They should have just delayed it a year. Or, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I just, the film I, that we need. The, the, the moustache was that bad. The person I went to go see uh, Justice League with turned around and said to me, it was like, oh, they've changed the, they've changed the actor. Like, yeah. it was the opening shot. The opening shot. It was the opening it, shot of the film even, as well. They didn't even ease you into it. It no. was just like, this fucking is what we're about. That. This is what we're about. We're going to give you fucking nightmares for the rest of your days, right? Because... Yeah. You, you, it was awful. And they, yeah, like they said, oh, well, they changed the, 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 the actor. And I'm like, no, they've not changed the actor. That's just the abomination we have. Yeah. Did, um, 
Neil, I know you watched this one. Did you watch Legion and which, which way? Legion. 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 Is that the one where they're in the diner and it's the angels and stuff? Or no, uh, no it's um Is that one with Paul Bettany? Yeah, no, Paul Bettany. No, 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 it's the T V series with uh oh I forgot his name now. Oh, the oh X-Men, yeah, the X Men TV yeah, series. Yeah, 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 I yeah. Watched yeah. The first... Yeah, I, thought you meant, I thought you meant the movie. Mm. Uh, no, yeah, because that was the the first episodes. I, I think I think it was with you, Neil, where it was just absolutely messed up. Yeah, you show me you, you show me uh, some of the scenes in that. Uh, yeah, Alan Tudyk kills it as Mister Nobody. Chat definitely. Uh, right, let's have a look. Suicide Squad hated Jared Leto as Joker. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Loved him in Fire. Hang, hang, uh, hang, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hold, hold, hold up, hold up here. Cuban Groove. Hold up. Can, can you please tell me why you hated Jared Leto as the Joker? You just, liked him. I'm just interested. I'm just interested. Anthony's got a connection with Jared. Oh. I tell you I, a. I tell you, uh, I tell you what, look. Jared Leto's acting chops are are up there i mean the guy you don't win an oscar yeah. if you're not a good actor right i really really rate jared Leto, and the first i can remember the morning i remember the morning so vividly when i woke up and i think i had a message from nick saying new joke of picture and it was the first time that that they released an official um picture of Leto, and I think it was on uh, the Joker's 75th like anniversary or something like that of the character. And it's the first time you saw him. You know, he's got that 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 picture where he's like screaming into the. Oh yeah. And from that moment, I almost kind of fell in love with it simply because of how different and how uh, left field they went with the character. Because they yeah. literally they took the Joker DNA and they said, "Let's modernize it as much as we possibly can and make him into kind of like this." Mexican type cartel vibey kind of gangster rather than your typical gangster in your pinstripe suit kind of thing. And I and I understand why it rubs people up the wrong way. I totally understand it because you're taking such an iconic character and an iconic image and you are literally turning it on its head. I get why people are upset. But you have to remember we're we're in a we're in a time where <clears throat> like nearly every single character from a comic book world has changed in some kind of way. I mean, look at, look at the Joker in, in the dark Knight. I mean, he's very, very different to any other Joker you've got before it yet. People went mad for him. And mm. I'm going to say this now. I've said it many times. Heath Ledger's overrated. I don't care. I mean, people, people crucify me for saying, You're it, on but track, I think mate. That he was only received. People, people only received him as well as they did is because he died. And I know no, it's a terrible, he, terrible I, thing to say. I know it's a terrible thing to say, but he would, not have been, he would not he have been done. appreciated as much as he was in that role had that man still been alive today. I can almost, I would put a, fucking, I would put a mortgage on it. Nah, There's no way he would have won an Oscar for that, for that movie if he was still alive. No wow. way. That's very controversial. It is very controversial. <laughs> Think full of shit, I, mate. <laughs> it, it is it is and i've i've said it many times to many yeah. people but i think that i think that legend don't get me wrong he does really good he's a really good joker i'm not saying that he's not a good joker but was he as good as everyone said he was no and you'd say what he was better not, like leto I'm was not, better i'm not saying that leto's better no i'm saying that they are very good oh, versions oh, of what oh. they're trying to portray <laughs> I'm saying that they are yeah, very yeah. good versions of what they're trying to portray. And I think that people get so bogged down in comparisons to two characters that have the same name, but have no similar traits. The Joker character mm. is very malleable. It's very moldable. Look at every single Joker that we've had. It's very different to the one that has come before it. Every single time, it's very different than the one that's come before it. Yet people... I think uh, the Joker roles become... A... <laughs> Oh, got a hello, Neil. There. there you go. Well, I was saying the Joker's become like, um, you know, when a, a new actor takes it. Can you hear me? So yeah, when an actor yeah, yeah. takes the Joker role, like it's like a massive thing, isn't it? So they, they're always going to, there's always going to be like a massive difference between the last. I think because every actor that takes it, it's like a prestige thing, isn't it? They want to put their own turn on it. And props to yeah. 
Leto for going the direction that he did, but it wasn't great, mate. Yeah, no, like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. That type of joker, that type of joker that Ledger did, he did it very well. But that type of joker yeah. is a very different joker than the one that Leto portrayed. That mm. type of joker is very different than the one that, that Nicholson portrayed. Yeah. That, Nicholson's joker was very different than the type of joker that, that Cesar Romero played they've all got their own differences but i think that because people got so um and i don't think the fact that the movie was so shit helped either the mo the movie being as mm. shit as it was it kind of it didn't help the fact that he was only in it for a, like six or seven minutes or whatever the fuck we got of, of it and yeah. it, it kind of put a bad taste in people's mouth like straight away so that he was never going to be positively uh, received because the movie was so bad and he wasn't even in it long enough for people to make a full critique, to be fair. Like, mm. I, 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 I really asked people what they didn't like about him in that movie because he was barely in it enough to make a decision. Like, I'm not saying that he was the best Joker in the world. He's not the best Joker in the world. Everyone's got their own differences. Mm. But I can't wholeheartedly say he was shit at being the Joker because I barely fucking see it, saw him as being the Joker. You know what I mean? All of his yeah, shit yeah. was cut. Have um, have just, any of you watched the uh, new fair. Harley Quinn animation? Uh, <clears> that <throat> with Kaylee Cuoco is the is Harley Quinn, isn't it? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard it's really really good and like one of the best sort of interpretations of Harley. Keep seeing really good stuff about it. Justice League was nice, so yeah, Blair Witch was a letdown. Sort oh. it out, Ravi. Sort oh. it out. Blair Witch. You, you know your know your audience here, Ravi. <laughs> sort yourself out, Ravi. Uh, Snyder didn't help matters. Uh, it's so weird because DC animation is so good. How does the film extension get it wrong again yeah. and again? I agree. There's been many conversations I've had with people saying that, that DC should probably just sack in the the. The, the real life versions of films and just stick stick with DC animation because they're so good. That, I, think, yeah. I guess they have a lot more freedom with the animation as well. Like they, yeah. they don't have the budget constraints and stuff. And, and I, I guess the studios don't get involved as much. Yeah. So yeah, I'll I think tell they you, should like, um, more to... Yeah, go on now. Yeah, they totally should just do more animations. You know, look at uh, Into the Spider-Verse, like how crazy that was. Get like a big budget, good oh, animation. Oh so God. Definitely. Oh, so yeah, good. DC, that'd be amazing. Why not? The um, where is it? One of the other ones that I picked was this. Oh. Never, never watched it. Yeah, th this that had like amazing. a really. Yeah. It was just pants. I think the it, concept was interesting, but yeah, they completely yeah. like wasted the concept. I hate that. Like in time, did that as well. Remember that film yeah. in time? Great concept, yeah, yeah. shit film. I oh, didn't you like it in time? It was it. Uh, the concept was really, really good. Mm -hmm. That kept me interested in the film. But when you actually, it was it just it just felt like they wasted the concept. Like they didn't really do much with it. Yeah, it ended yeah. up turning into a chase film, like mm -hmm. in the end, didn't it? So yeah, that was a bit of a disappointment. But yeah, wasted concept. I hate when that happens. Legion so, overrated. Uh and his brilliant film is life. Definitely. He's got it in his veins. I'm just oh. I, I have no heart. Barry, uh, I'm yeah, <laughs> saying that I'm slagging off the dead. Like I'm I'm not. I, I would say this about anyone. I'm just saying that he like I, a lot of people, like most people that I have this conversation with, like look at me as if I'm crazy. But I just don't I just don't think that he was as good as everyone says he was. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Slagging off the dead. Even, Even Phoenix, Phoenix did a better job. job. Well, the... <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is a very, very different, again, is a very, very different Joker. His performance in that movie, regardless of whether or not he was the Joker or not, his performance alone was breathtaking. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make him a better Joker than someone. It makes him a great Joker. The version of the Joker he did, I can't compare that to 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 even 
uh, um, Heath Ledger's Joker because they're two very, very different things, and it'd be unfair to. Bye, Heather. You've probably gone now, but <laughs> enjoy Umbrella yeah, Academy. Five minutes ago. Ravi, stop encouraging that with his DC and Batman. I could, I, could, I could talk about it forever. And and loves it. Cowboys and Aliens was pure shite. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, shit, yeah. Oh, should, it could have been so good as well, like... Uh, see you later, mate. Thanks for uh, joining Thanks us. For dropping by, uh... so what was your, what was... He's a beautiful what man, was... I won't lie, but... <laughs> did Dallas, a, a did Dallas Buyers Club swing you, did it? Oh, it, it, it wasn't him in Dallas Buyers Club. It was just just him. Just in... <laughs> but, he, like, but in Dallas, I mean, uh, and all jokes aside, like, he was incredible in Dallas yeah, Buyers Club. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was really... I mean, so was McConaughey. McConaughey stole the show for Dallas Buyers Club, but Leto was incredible in that movie. I think he's only really been bad in one film. Um, the uh, Suicide Squad. <laughs> no, Blade Blade Runner, the Blade Runner film. I thought he was terrible in that. I I watched Blade Runner twenty forty nine like in its entirety over like four different viewings. I still haven't watched it all in one go, and I'm just like I'm I'm not rushing to do it because I wasn't like it was it, visually it looked incredible. It is um, incredible. But I just wasn't that bothered by it. It's a good film. I, I rate it. I probably should uh, Leto wasn't great in it as well. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that he's a bit of a, a, a non-entity in it, really. Yeah, he just hams it up a bit with the uh, yeah. the whole God complex thing he's got in it. It's just, I think that's just him, though, really. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> Do you know what film I watched this week, which I've not watched in a while, that I absolutely love? I saw Maybe it in the sky. How did you guess? What <laughs> that? That's it. Does. No, no. So it was this bad boy. Boom. Oh, nice. yes. What a film. The Bruce Lee story, The Dragon. Absolutely love this film. We used to um, watch this like all the time when we were kids, didn't we? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like we used to cane all the fight scenes and stuff. Absolutely love The Dragon. I think for, for me, the when I was watching it this week, just the, the soundtrack um jason scott lee looks awesome um you've got is it oh what's the name holly who was jim carrey's wife from dumb and dumber she's in it oh um why has that escaped it's holly something um but yeah i just i love the uh i love the film a lot a lot of fantasy um i love the sort of demon that comes out from when he's imagining on the film set um yeah it's just an, an old classic from mm. when i was younger and obsessed with the film and it's just a, a really good watch really yeah, love nostalgia. it yeah really good um i have to say that christopher nolan more so than marvel marvel brought comics into film in a way that money got funneled into that genre really helped it yeah because yeah. chris nolan did a did a a wicked like a, like probably the best job at normalizing a comic book world uh, make it uh, ground grounding a comic book world so much that everything feels like this could actually happen and yeah. that like so you've not got any kind of like your fantasy characters in there you've got real life characters in there like the batman is very it's very believable that uh, this rich billionaire can do what he does the way that he does it. You've got a Joker character that literally just is just an anarchist. Um, you've got a scared character that uses his work position as his, as his main power. So everything kind of, everything was really grounded and felt very, very real. And Nolan did a, a really, really good job at bringing people into that environment that maybe, if you don't, if even if you're not a comic book fan, you could get on board with it because the characters are kind of relatable, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. you're not going to get your fantastic kind of like doomsdays coming out or anything like that, or you're not going to get Superman flying around. What you're going to get are like almost real life people doing very, very weird things. Don't get me wrong, but it makes it a little bit more believable. So you're going to get more of an audience. Yeah. 
I, I would, agree. I would yeah. totally agree with that. Uh, what do you guys think of the upcoming Black Widow? What was discussed? I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah it's not. No, I'll give it a watch. I'm not. It's like, not something that really it, but... interests me. It's not something that's pushed will push me to go to the cinema uh, to watch it. Um, the trailer I'm didn't really way, do anything. I'm interested to see the way they do Taskmaster. Um, yeah, he's a really good, really good villain. Um, but the same, and I really like Scarlett Johansson as as, as Black Widow. But mm. I think I'm I feel, I'm going to feel this way after after any movie that comes out after Endgame. Really, it isn't Spider Man. I'm just going to feel this whole this 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 kind of feeling of. I, I just don't feel like I want to watch Marvel anymore. I feel like I'm done with Marvel. Um, and I think that's just because, like, Endgame was the end for me. Like, you've got all these characters that you've kind of almost grown up with, in a sense, over the last 10 years or 11 years or so. And a lot of their story arcs have, have ended now, and a lot of the best characters of the uh, of the, the the Marvel universe that that we're we're used to are no longer going to be in it. Um, so I'm just kind of like, yeah, unless it's Guardians or Spider Man, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'll, I'll probably watch it if I get round to watching it. But I'm not going to be super excited by it. And mm. the, I suppose the good thing about having that kind of view to it is if it's really good, you're always going to be pleasantly surprised. So. Best martial art films. Oh, Jackie, this, you... this is a long question. Oh, <laughs> this this is a topic that I love. Look, okay, one of my favourite martial arts films, and I think it's just because of how how much I used to watch it when I was younger. Was Double Impact? Uh, Van Damme and Van Damme. Alex, Alex and Chad. Alex and Chad. Yeah. And it's just <coughs> what is, the the. the and it's Big like, surprise. The, the sex scene in that movie is absolutely <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> me me yeah, and um, me and Neil used to have a, we used to laugh funny, at yeah. one of the bits in the sex scene because there's a bit where he just it goes, flicks ah, back and he goes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I mean, yeah. Apart from like weird sex scene, no, that is really. I, yeah. I thought it was a really. Am I just frozen? Moment. Yeah, you are. You, you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> just frozen. <laughs> Okay. Well, can you still hear me though? Yeah, yeah we can yeah. hear you. It's frozen on a brilliant moment. Nice. I don't know if Ant can see it. Where it looks like Neil's yeah. just laughing his head off. Like... We just leave it like that. Or... We just leave it like that. Just... Or it's Neil. To... Neil was playing with his balls <laughs> <laughs> while he's discussing films. Um, so... Okay, so <laughs> your favorite? I'm guessing your favorite uh, martial arts movie, Nick. Um... Bloodsport. No. No. Bloodsport. It's a Van Damme no. movie, for sure. It's a Van Damme, for sure. But Van, Van Damme's in there. Um, our so, target. No. It's, our, our target's a banger, though. Kit, kit box is there. Oh, um, to me. I told you a film that I loved in the 90s, and it was probably one of the best martial art films in the 90s, and it's very sort of unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop looking at that picture. I need to print screen. No, don't do it. I'm a virgin. The, uh, the, the film in the 90s, martial arts film, is called Drive, and it's with uh, Mark Dacascos. Oh, um, I love that film. It, I love it, that film. This, this film came out before Rush Hour, and the concept is very oh. similar to Rush Hour. Um, and the fight scenes in that are absolutely insane. It's got Brittany Murphy in it. Um, so she's like the, the crazy hotel lady that's yeah. following Mark Dacascos around. Um, so if you if you love your martial art films, go and watch Drive with Mark Dacascos and you will see some amazing fight scenes. Yeah. Um, Mark Dacascos, he's the one in Romeo Must Die. Yes, uh, another good film with Mark Cascos is uh, Only the Strong, where that's around. He's in John Wick Three. Yeah, yeah, he's a bad guy yeah. in John Wick. Um, so yeah, yeah, love Only the Strong. Uh, Only the Strong was yeah. We watched that loads, didn't we, Neil? Uh, yeah, like a bit of banana way, banana way, banana. Neil, just so you know, I've got a decent print screen, so I can. Um... I can I can that's put that on I mean. the Instagram. I can put that on the Instagram for you. So. J 
Cheers, mate. Neil, um, Neil we can just discuss the many things that you're doing at your chair right now. Mm-hmm. He, he's I want to give my uh, favourite martial arts films, man. Yeah, right. So go on, Neil. Tell, tell us one of your favourite martial arts films. So it's got to be Kickboxer, number one. Yeah. yeah. And then Undisputed 2. Undisputed 2, bad boy film. Have I gone again? No, you still yeah, there. Still Undisputed 2. The first time you showed me that film, mate. The first time you showed me that film, I just could not believe the shit that they were doing in that film. Like It was just, the, the fights were just insane. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, like, it was like the next level. I'd never so seen anything that good before. Like <sighs> the Boyka kick is just like yeah. if I can remember the first yeah. time I saw that that, the that kick. Boyka kick, I was like, <laughs> yeah, the the, the guy with a kick in that is awesome. Uh, if you like your kicks, Michael Jar White does one called the uh, Psycho Kick that he does in yeah. uh, Universal Soldier Two. Or he does it in uh, Blood, oh. Blood and Bone. Blood and Bone is an awesome martial art film with Michael Jai White. Yeah, Blood it's a bit uh, sort of street fighting, sort of blood sportish. Blood and Bone, the one yeah. where he's in prison. Yeah, with uh, Kimbo. Yeah, Kimbo yeah, slides. That first fight scene's amazing as well. Yeah, in the prison um, uh, bathrooms. Obviously, the raid films. The raid, the raid yeah. films the raid sort films. of set a standard. Yeah, listen. Um, if you any of the raid films like number one is a banger like an absolute banger like if if you like i said before if you are familiar with dread the raid is is so good a million it, times um... like number two like it's not as good as number one in my opinion is like twice no. it's almost twice as long as number one um but the end fight in number two in the in the kitchen had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. Like I felt so anxious watching that fight because it just kept on going and going mm. and going. It was so good. So sick. So sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I prefer the raid one to the raid two just because of the 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 whole kind of idea behind it. Oh, no retreat, no surrender. Yeah. Yeah. What about, I'm really good in that. Neil Lux point. That Boy, you've 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 paused like this because it really looks like someone's tickling your bum hole. <laughs> they are. tickling they his are. feet, um, tickling his balls. I think we should make a vote. Who's tickling Neil? Is it his balls, his bum hole, or his feet? Definitely I'm going, for, I'm going for his balls. <laughs> I, I bet you are. Um, I'm going to try and fix this. I'll be back in a sec. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I kind of, I kind of like it. What a disappointment! Spider-Man Two with Garfield. Uh, uh, look, Garfield is. I like Spider-Man. Garfield. I quite like. I like uh, Garfield as Spider-Man. I think that Garfield nailed the cockiness of Spider-Man um, really, really well. Um, the only problem was Garfield was like thirty, portraying like a fifteen-year-old kid. That was the only real problem. Was the fact that he was far too old to be playing that role. Um, but yeah, I think um, Garfield was really good as Spider-Man. The Spider-Man 2, yeah. the, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 as a film was was not good. Um, no. Some very I did like the um, I did like the ending because I didn't expect it. What, in the um, tower? In the tower. Yeah. Well, if you know the, if you know the, 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 the problem is with that movie. If you know, like yo, Gwen, if, I'm like back. Gwen Stacy's, yo, if you know Gwen Stacy's storyline and you know like how that happens, you will know yeah. that that happens in a tower. The problem yeah. is for the promos of that movie. In the trailer, they bang that tower in it in the in the yeah, trailer. Yeah, so you yeah. kind of like, oh, well, she's brown bread then. It kind of ruined it a little bit. Yeah, I hate when trainers uh, do that. Groove says best martial arts, uh, It Man series. Yeah, absolutely solid. It Man 1 mm. is the best. It Man 4, it's got yeah. a good friend Scott Adkins in it, so I'm always going to like it. Uh, number 3. I've never seen any of really it. Man. Like it. Mate, First you one, on. you need to watch no, the, number 1 especially. Number 1 is a beast mode of the film. 
that fight, the, the 10 black belts fight, even, just just try and find it on YouTube and just watch that 10 black belts fight. You've probably seen it. It's yeah. just insane. But the story leading up to it is good as well. So it makes the fight like a million times better. Um, yeah. Operation Flashpoint is another good Donnie M1. That f- uh, just, oh, it's just Flashpoint, isn't it? Yeah. That M fight, just so like brutal. You can see they're properly hitting each other. And some of the punching in it is really good as well. He was like, bringing just, like, sort like, of... Um... Punch and then ducks it and... A lot of MMA type of moves in that, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, so he sort of changed, changed his style up for, for Flashpoint. Yeah. Um, really good film. Uh, the final fight scene in John Wick 3 was so good. And he's like, we are the same. I was dying. Keanu is not on his level. Yeah, the final fight in, in, in John Wick 3 is a banger. You know when that um, where he fights the two guys just before he fights Mark, Mark DeCascos? Mm. I think yeah. in the script he was meant to kill them. But Keanu Reeves didn't want to kill them because he like respected them so much as like martial artists or something. So they changed the script. So they just walked away from it. But I was yeah. uh, quite interesting to come out of that. Do you know that um, in in John Wick Two when they're going through like the uh, modern art thing and they're they're firing their guns. All the all the gunshots are to the beats of the music that's playing at the same time. Oh, really? Like every single bullet is to the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. In background, like in is- Shaun of the Dead. When yeah. They're, uh, hit, yeah. Absolute <laughs> madness. I, oh, don't worry, Jackie. I got I got a screenshot of it. Don't worry. I got I got a no, decent screenshot of it. It'll, it'll go on the gram. Don't worry. <laughs> it's going to be the thumbnail for the next uh, live stream, isn't it? Uh, just, yeah, just, just you, like. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's mentioned uh, a bit of Tony Jar in here. So no, on back. Check Warrior tough. King on back was again another one that was a bit of a, a sort of game changer when it came out. So I think you saw this was where you really saw uh, fight scenes where it had impact when people were getting hit. Mm. And you was like, fucking hell, that looks painful. Um, where he's just kneeing them and just kicking them in the face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They just brilliant. beat the fuck out of each other. Yeah. It? Some of these yeah. feel like, for real. It's mad. I, it's I, was, expected, I, was watching, it? um, I was watching one of Scott Atkins, uh, the, the oh. series he's currently doing. I oh, was talking shit. about, yeah, he's fought everyone in all of the... Uh, martial art genre and he was talking about tony jar and saying he's one of the most powerful kickers yeah. that he's come across and he said even though he was like small um he was quite dense and he just said he's that explosive the the power in his kicks um yeah. was immense yeah didn't he um, fight him in oh, he things himself about him yeah. yeah yeah so uh scott scott it was funny because scott was talking about when he saw tony jar and he looked at him as sort of competition and when they did triple threat, he wanted to test himself in real life to see how he could sort mm. of compete with him. Um, and he said uh, he kept up with him and did well. And he said, but the power that he felt in his legs was, he could tell, it, yeah, he's, he's got that. So I thought that was uh, really interesting. Mm. Because, mm. Because, because sometimes you think it's um, a bit gymnastic, flying stuff. Yeah, um, I got that impression, yeah, and you don't. It doesn't look like there's a lot of power, but um, Scott said there's tons of power behind mm. the kicks. You just imagine uh, the momentum from all the jumping that he's doing. You get quite a lot of force behind that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I tell you another good one. Um, not many people would have watched this one. It's uh, Marco Zorro. Um, he was the villain in Undisputed Three. And he's got a martial art film called The Redeemer. Oh, um, yeah, you showed me that. That's sick. Really good fight scenes in that. Um, and again, he's a, he's another guy who's very tall, very big. So you don't really see a lot of people with that height um, doing these type of aerial kicks. And he's very muscular. Um, so, yeah, really good film, The, the Redeemer. That is with uh, Marco Zorro. Talented person who manipulated the balls and the bum hole at the same time. 
<laughs> I fully agree. And that martial art film sounds fantastic. Yeah. I think you uh, was talking about Neil. <laughs> uh, Monkey the Series. Yeah, definitely. Fist of Legend with Jet Li. Yes. Awesome. Some dirty fights. Is that the one, uh, Neil, where it starts off in the school and he's yes. breaking all the arms? Yeah, they uh, come in, don't they? And they're the, yeah. it's like the Japanese soldiers, and he's just a student, and he just yeah, he's just breaking arms left, right, and center. Yeah, and then the <laughs> yeah. final fight with the uh, general at the end is just sick. It just keeps going. But yeah, I love uh, Unleashed. Unleashed is awesome with uh, Bob Hoskins. Well, it was called Danny the Dog, wasn't it? Over here. Yeah, it was a mixture of names: Danny the Dog, Unleashed. Yeah. Danny the Dog. Yeah, because yeah. he's because he was a dog. A dog in the film. I didn't get that name. Like Unleashed was a much better name. Uh, yeah. But Scott was Scott Atkins was in that as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, fighting Jet Li in the uh, in, in the, the cage. pool. Yeah, it was in the cage type of thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the late great uh, Bob Hoskins as well. Yeah. Make a great thumbnail of it, definitely. Don't worry. It was a be- got, beautiful moment, Neil. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah. The way he whistled for his cloud, yeah, the monkey series, old school monkey series. So well, yeah. well over my head. I don't know. That Ong one. back, and did you watch Ong back? I've never seen it, mate. No. Oh my god! I need to uh, show you a few of these things when you come back. There's, is it Ong back two where that that continuous take up the staircase? Uh, where I he think starts at the bottom and he's the warrior king. Yeah, that was that was just insane, and they did that all in in one take, and they must they've done it about three or four attempts at it as well. Yeah, imagine how like difficult that must have been. But it was so, funny because when um, I watched Tony Jaw talking about that scene, and because they had to do it in one take, there was a, a part where he was talking about he got tired, and he was supposed to do a kick, and he says, oh, "I'm supposed to do a kick here." But I was that tired, I couldn't be arsed, so I did something else, and the stuntman didn't realise he was going to do something else. I so watched, I I watched something. I think I know what scene you're talking about. I've not seen the movie, but I think I know what scene you're talking about, because I think I watched um, Scott Adkins talk about it. On yeah, one it was of the, it, yeah, GQ, yeah. wasn't it, or something? Yeah, yeah. I think I watched the video of him talking about it, and I think he said the same thing. He was like, you can tell at this point that he's flagging. Because like his his form is a little bit off, and you can tell that the um the actors that he's hitting are, are like overselling it a little bit more because the power's not there because he's absolutely knackered. Yeah, you can, like you can. Yeah, I think I watched I watched Scott talk talk about that. Yeah, Kill Bill. Um, yeah, it's not a martial arts film. Um, I think you've put there. It's top ridiculous and wonderful movie. I mean, it... But I think yeah, go on now. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean, it Gone. kind of is. It's got the essence of it, hasn't it, in parts? Is it, got, yeah. is it going again? I mean, with Kill Bill, it's not really like an out-and-out martial arts film, but it has the elements, doesn't it? Um, it's, it's got a lot of the themes and the training and gone again. No, Am no, I sure. still here? Can you hear me? <laughs> You're afraid. No, no, Bumal. I, I was I was hoping for another freeze there. Um, yeah. Kill Bill's good. I mean, Did you get any of that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay for what it is, yeah. but it's definitely yeah. It's not a martial arts film. It has martial arts tendencies in in a revenge film, um, but it's it's more of a nod to kind of like older martial arts movies without yeah. being classified in itself as a martial arts movie. Uma Thurman does really really good in it, um, but yeah, you couldn't class it as a martial arts movie. It's a it's a it's a revenge movie with martial arts tastes tasters should we say i think for me i've got a problem with the wire work in any martial art film i'm not a big fan of the sort of crouching tiger films and ones where they're just flying all over the place with wires um, yeah i like it. i don't mind it if it's used a little bit um, to exaggerate like yeah a to little exaggerate bit. a little spin um but when it's too much it it takes me out of the film and I don't enjoy it that much. Yeah, so, I remember yeah, the yeah. wire I remember work when, is not great for me. I remember when I first saw something like that and it was in um it was in Romeo and <laughs> Die actually. It was in with Jet Lee. And I was like when he was doing some of this stuff, I was like, 
because I was young when that came out. I was like, he didn't just do that, did he? Like, there's no way he just did that. And then, yeah, so you, you kind of it, it you you start to question kind of like your belief in what they're able to do because then like people are like saying, oh my god, Jet Li is the new so and so, or Jet Li is this. And I'm like, yeah, but yeah, you know, I remember that hype. You know, like Jet Li's the new Jackie Chan or Jet Li's the new Bruce Lee. I'm like, yeah, but he gets flung he gets flung around with wires all the time. Like Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee never did that. Like I'd be a wicked martial artist if someone just threw me around. I can't I uh, can't put, put a straight leg up, but I'd be wicked at doing that if you if you bang me on some wires. Yeah, look at uh, was it um Charlie's Angels? Yeah. Drew yeah, where she's on the wires doing the splits kick, which is only like her legs are just like that. <laughs> yeah, not it, really, it really not takes me out of the wire where it does. Um like, Steven Seagal. <clears throat> yeah, go on. Not really like, a martial I, artist, really. Steven Seagal, is he? Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is just a... It's like one of those where it's just like, are we all just superheroes? We're standing yeah, on the edge of the like, grass. It, artistically, it's nice. Um, yeah. It looks amazing. Um, but, yeah, martial arts-wise, it, yeah, it's not too great. Mm. Um, Seagal, he, he was brilliant when he first came out. I loved yeah. Steven Seagal. Um, I think Out for Justice, Hard to Kill, Nico. Hard to um, Kill. Hard to kill, yeah, brilliant. I think, yeah, it was like him showing the the uh aikido on screen. Um, I think wowed quite a lot of people because it was totally different to what yeah. everyone else was doing. Um, and it looked um very cool. Um, and him just taking on everyone and just chucking them all over the place. But he's become a bit of a laughing stock now. Um, he's a laughing stock. It's yeah, um, so, so his his early films are fantastic, but yeah, he's a bit of a yeah, bit of a mess at the moment. So I've got a good film for you now. This Neil will know this film. This is a bad boy classic film. I, I know. I think I know what you're gonna say. I think I know what you're gonna say now, mate. You, you don't know. You ready? I better do. Boom! I made it. Literally, I was going to say that. Leroy, the last dragon. <laughs> the last dragon, such a sick Bruce film. Leroy, awesome <laughs> film. This, me and Neil used to watch this loads when we were younger. Bit of show off. Uh, used to get the glow, so we had to get the glow, didn't he, Neil? To, yeah. to fight show off, and then show off got the glow as well. Honestly, <laughs> it was so like stupid, a, but it was so good. <laughs> Bit of a comedy film. It's not a real martial art film, um, but it's just a, <laughs> one of them sort of eighties films. Yeah. Um, it was just a, a really good film. Dead cheese. If you watch it now, you'd be like, "What the hell is this?" Um, but because you grew up with it from when you were younger, you you'll accept it. Which is uh, another it's film. Nostalgic, isn't it? Right. I'm going to get another one. This and you might have definitely seen this one. It's martial art related. Let's see. I need, to, I need to get a picture and then bang it on the screen. I am confused with Last Dragon, Cuban. I, I am very confused with Last Dragon. <laughs> I've never seen that. The Last Dragon is a classic. Yeah. Cheese, but classic. It's worth watching it for a laugh, mate. Hundred percent. Right. Where's this picture? What you got Check for us? Messages. Here we go. Boom. Oh, three ninjas. Three ninjas. <laughs> oh, my God. What were the names? Can you Rocky remember? Colton, Rocky Colton, Tom Tom. Yeah. Rocky yeah. Luz. Tom Tom. I see. Yeah. yeah, I used to love these films, man. But the, the um, got the, all of them. The dude bros in that were so funny. It was like, if I was a little booger, where would I be? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good that movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's so good. Tom Tom was a, just a G, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Tom Tom. Oh, these sweet little fatty. We were sick of martial arts. Uh, but Barry's done a uh, beautiful. Um... <laughs> what? <are> we... <laughs> 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 nice one, buddy. That is some sound effects to it as well. Yeah, the sound effects are. Oh, 
<laughs> Someone was under the table, Neil. <laughs> we, we need to get that across to Neil. Cheers for that. That was, that, that was quick, Barry. Barry had that saved. <laughs> Just waiting for that opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That was really yeah, but Three Ninjas was a bad boy, bad boy movie. We used to love watching Three Ninjas. Mm. And Strike Back. Three Ninjas Strike Back as well was good. Voodoo magic, yes, yes. No, 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 that was hard to kill. That was hard to kill. I'm sure it was hard to kill. Voodoo magic, uh, man, I thought that was Predator 2. Oh, that's Predator 2 as well. Yeah. Voodoo magic, man. No, no, but they do have it in uh, hard to kill as well. Uh, Anthony looks confused with Last Dragon. Definitely. Yep. King of the Kickboxes. <laughs> Ravi, uh, yes. Scott did it. Interview with uh, Lauren Avenden recent uh, last week. So yeah, go really check it out. Good. Yeah, really um, good. With Billy Billy Blanks. Yeah, really good. Such a good film. I need to go back and watch um, No No Retreat, No Surrender Two and Three because yeah, I completely yeah. like didn't even know those films existed until I watched the um, uh, Art of Action. So I need to catch up on them. But yeah, King of Cake Box is such a quality film. And how say go bit of Game Gear was it? What's that? You remember, you remember Game Gear? Oh yeah, I had a Game Gear. I loved Game Gear. And can you remember Game Gear? Game Gear? Were you not around then? No, I got one. Not. I got one for Christmas, and David broke it like two weeks later. <laughs> Sega Game Gear. I used to always want one, and then when I got one, I was like, yes. And then the batteries ran out after ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Was, like, <laughs> good games like right Sonic games. Game Gear was like a, a Sega handheld. Mm. Big, big, big block it was. Uh, once upon a time in China. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so what films have you watched oh. this week? You know what? I've not really watched that much. I've been getting into watching um, just like little, little um, shows more. Than, I say little shows. It's a big show, but um, things that not taking too much time to watch. So I'm kind of watching the American yeah. Office. Oh yeah, I'm um, just going through because they're only like half hour episodes, so they're really first cool. time through or yeah, first time through. Oh, I'm so jealous, man. So Such yeah, like, there's some there's some real gems in there. Like I've never cringed so much at watching something like like and. It, it, it's so it's so weird because like they're doing it on purpose but i am so unbelievably cringy like i'm there like oh no you didn't just say that you didn't just do that um but yeah it's really it's really really good um i have just whilst i was eating dinner earlier on <clears> watching <throat> the matrix it was just on just matrix one like last week it was matrix reloaded that was on i think it's just they're just showing matrix <clears throat> on at the minute but um yeah, I forgot how much I love that movie. You know, what I love, I love the one. end. Number where one, he's so good. He's doing the blocking. Yeah. The, the thing that Bonan, I love the most. Bonander. The thing that I love the most about that movie, I think, is the um, the lobby scene where yeah. they him and Trinity go in and just decimate, and it's. I I love that. That scene is just. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> so cringe. You have to watch. You have to watch through your fingers. Yeah, you do. You're there, like, oh no, come on. Do you guys have Hannah series running in the UK? It's on Amazon. Yes. Yes. Not got around to it yet. I've not yeah. watched it though. Is, it, is it any good? Yeah. Let us know if it's any good. Mm. I'll get on that this week. I'm finishing up. Um, still finishing up. Ray Donovan. Um, it's all still so going, on, yeah, yeah. Uh, like so on, 20 million now, or something like that. season on. six, I think there's season seven, it's up to, but yeah, I love Ray Donovan. Um, John Voigt in it is, yeah, I do like Mickey he's, in it, he's good, yeah, he's, he's yeah. amazing. In it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so four, he's just a fucker, isn't it? Yeah, he's hilarious. <laughs> I uh, love John Boyd. What have you watched, Neil? What have you watched this week? Uh, Doom Patrol. I've been on that this week. Um, just pretty much all I've watched, I think. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, 
yeah, really great, funny. It's my new favourite series at the minute. So I'm going to finish up season one, and then the plan is to get on like Umbrella Academy next, season yeah. two. So I'm about how, how do you how do you compare Doom Patrol with Umbrella Academy? See you later, Jackie. Uh, I, See you, Jackie. I, I don't want to say I don't want to say until I finish watching the season. I've still got about three or four episodes along. I'd say Doom Patrol. I'd, I'd more compare it to uh, Legion. The oh, right, type okay. of yeah, I, I'd compare it to that with the type of mystical stuff that's going off, uh, time yeah. travel and, and things like that. So yeah, no, it's really good. You know, what, I thought I thought originally um, Doom Patrol was a bit of a sort of. Uh, cheapo sort of version tv series i did. Um, I, I dismissed it but but then when i watched it i was like this is pretty awesome and yeah, i really enjoyed it yeah really enjoyed it i like the girl that plays jane in it as well she's a really good actress like the way that she plays all the different characters and stuff yeah what, what's your favorite episode so far uh where they're going to the underground what have I missed it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, yeah, you know, when um, yeah. the light... <clears throat> Paw Patrol. I have to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, when they go into, when you, she goes into the underground and you meet all the new... Uh, all the personalities, how they actually are and everything. Well, that was a good episode. That was, that was the last one I watched. Yeah. No, no. I need to... Um, I need to start season two. Because, uh, yeah... It's definitely one uh, one that I really like. No, Swamp it was Thing. a pleasant surprise. <clears throat> Swamp Thing's really good, to be fair. Um, Is it? Really, yeah, really surprised they uh, got rid of it. It was very dark and um, sort of reminds me of the sort of uh, Evil Dead where it's a lot of practical effects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed Swamp Thing. I uh, don't know if it's going to come back, but yeah, it'll get really... picked up by another network or something if it was so well received. Like, yeah, I've not seen anyone say anything like a bad word about it. Like, all the reception's been good, so someone else will pick it up, I reckon. Yeah, the second season on that. Cool. Uh, so we are going to wrap it up tonight. Um, yeah, so. <clears throat> I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's come on the stream. Um, it's much appreciated. Um, we've got lots of uh, fragrance reviews on the way. Um, we're going to have some movie stuff too coming out. Um, yeah, the, uh, the cinemas have opened up. Our cinema has the cinemas opened. have opened up, so reviews are going to be coming. So new, uh, new films are going to be watched. And, and some older films as well. I noticed that uh, there's some some very good old, older movies that are in the yeah, air. Yeah. In it, so I might get a good chance <coughs> to a classic. Yeah. So um yeah, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, give the video a like for us, um, and enjoy your weekend. Yes, yes. Take care, guys. See you later, guys. See, See you later. later. Bye. Bye. Bye.